Hi, this is Alex Neuer, the writer and director of Sound of Violence, and you're listening to the Horror Squad podcast. Hello, welcome back to the Horror Squad podcast, episode number 176. Tonight, we're going to talk about 2021's Army of the Dead, currently streaming on Netflix and in a couple of movie theaters around America. I'm one of your co-hosts, Todd. We have Sam, who's wearing uh, new headphones tonight, trying those out. Thanks for giving everyone an update, Todd. You're welcome. There's also a ladder behind her. I don't know what that's about. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> Steve uh, is wearing a shining shirt. I got it right this time. It's kind of hard to miss that one. And Joe is just wearing a smile, like usual. Thank you. Uh, and by the, Sam and I had a ladder match before we came on. <laughs> Ladders so and that's, chairs that's, match. That's, yes, that's why there's a ladder match. I don't even know what that it. means. <laughs> don't even explain like, it to her. Just do it. Yeah, WWF style. Like, oh. yeah. I was like, it was like the, the Hardy Boys and uh, Dudleys. That's it was fun. great stuff. Well, by the way, I watched uh, the Ultimate Warrior bi- biography this week. Man, that guy had a, a tough life. I, I I loved him, but I didn't know like how much shit he went through. And that's the uh, clean version of yeah. his life. Uh, mm-hmm. On Dark Side of the Ring, they're also doing Ultimate Warrior this week. Oh, nice! And I think that's the more honest, like real Probably, bad side yeah. of his life. So right, yeah, I can't wait to. People should watch if you like like how, it's not horror really, but if you like like drama. And the inner workings, of the, like the dark side of wrestling, it's an amazing fucking show that just really shows how fucked up some of these situations and people are. It's uh, super interesting. Mm-hmm. Where were you guys at today? Hanging out by the water or what? Yeah, we just w- walked downtown. There's like a little uh, ocean like walkway you can walk and like it takes you out like pretty far. So you're kind of like almost in the middle of the water. It's nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So if you're in San, if you decide to come visit Salem, you get nice ocean views. Sam, don't you shake your head at me. <laughs> she says outside's overrated. She'd rather be raining <laughs> and cloudy. I did enjoy the time outside, but you bring the doggy. No, not this morning. We didn't. No. Oh, poor doggy's left out. She's her hips are a little old, so she. When we go on yeah. long walks, it's a lot for. Her. Oh, poor puppy. Yeah. You know it. Do you guys have an interview, right? Yeah, that's right. We should also mention that we have an interview attached to this episode with uh, Alex Noyer. Uh, he is the writer and director of Sound of Violence, which is his first uh, feature film. Uh, it just came out this week. So uh, Joe and I are going to talk about it, but spoiler alert, we liked it. And I look forward to talking a little bit more detail of course we're not going to spoil it since it's still new but uh yeah so check out that uh interview very cool guy very interesting it was a different interview because he's more of a music guy and it just kind of took a different turn that we do with interviews usually and it's it's really interesting so definitely stay for that at the end of the episode all right you guys want to get some questions mm-hmm. do sure. it all right. You can ask us those questions on social media at the Horror Squad Podcast, or of course with our lovely Discord. Amazing people in there. We had some great discussions this week, guys. It was uh, it was really active this week. Like there was a lot going on, and we have quite a few new members. So uh, you know, welcome to all the new members. Really, don't be shy. Like throw out some stuff out there. People respond, and it's a, it's a good time in there. So, mm-hmm. so the first series of questions uh, again, and I apologize because I forgot. Uh, Mandy's questions last week so there's quite a few because there's last week's questions and this week's questions but she says hey squad in the queen of black magic Haki the kid was really buying the ghost story being told to him did you believe a ghost story slash legend that someone told you as a kid what about still believe all of them as, I'm told as an adult <laughs> yeah still believe I'm with yeah. God That's I funny. still believe um of, yeah totally of course yeah of course yeah especially like uh like i still think um if i say bloody mary three times in america she's gonna she's gonna come at me so she will i don't fuck with that oh my god who is that it's just sam in a costume (laughs) (laughs) that'd be hilarious actually Mm -hmm. um no i still believe in them and it's funny i was i'm going on vacation in a couple weeks here so i was looking up like stuff to do and there's actually a haunted bridge 
Oh, I'm trying to look it up right now, so I don't want. Where are you going, Totter? Going to Dallas, one of my favorite oh, okay. cities in the country. Nice. Yeah, so I'm gonna look that up while you guys go. I'm sure you've been there, but have you been to like where uh, the JFK spot? Yep. Where you guys? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a really uh, spooky man. You, you it got, is. Got a little section where President was killed. It's like wow. Mm-hmm. Did you go to the museum too? In yeah. the depository. Yeah, that was mm-hmm. really cool. You could be Gra- in there forever. Knowledge. Yeah. yeah. That museum is impressive. It is very, I mean, nice is a strange word, but it's nice museum. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, Mine's also Bloody Mary. Did you try it though? Or you were too scared? No, yes. I, I've told this story on here before. Like I tried it when I was younger and I did see her all in white. She was oh about to gosh. kill me. It's terrible. I'm scared. She's going to get you. Oh I mean, she's following you. She's waiting for you to have a boyfriend you really like or whatever joe you're dying (laughs) help me help me (laughs) uh yeah i mean my family have been telling me ghost stories since i'm a kid so you know whether or not they're true is a whole other story i've I've said a few on the podcast before uh one that maybe i haven't said i'm not 100 percent sure maybe i did you know I'm, i'm getting old and forgetting things but um my aunt uh, said that when she was a kid, she'd see a woman uh, dressed in like a nightgown with curlers on her head and her face looking like really um, like decaying face, like it wasn't a clear kind of human face. And she would stand at the door on the other side of the room and stare at her. And the longer that my aunt looked at her, the closer she started floating towards the bed. And every time my aunt would close her eyes or put sheets over her head and she'd look again, it would reset. She'd be back in the corner of the room and start getting closer to the bed. And she didn't know what to do because she can't run out. You know, the the entity is at her door and she didn't have the guts to, you know, make her kind of come as close as possible to see what happens. Um, But she said she did get pretty close once and it was horrifying and, you know, it just scared her to death. Uh, that house ended up burning, burning down not too long after that, a few weeks after that. And there was a ton of horror activity, like ghost activity there. My dad and his brother slept in the same room and they claimed to have seen a ghost float over their bed a few times. Uh, there were reports that there was knocking in the attic. Uh, the attic had a rocking chair in it that apparently the old man that lived there before would always be in. And he'd tap his pipe like on the, on the, on the wall. And that they would hear all night. And the thing that freaked them out is that the rocket chair was too big to, too big to bring up there. So it's like he had to build it there or anyway, it was like a whole thing. Uh, and yeah, they, they lost everything in a fire a few weeks later on Christmas Day of all fucking things. And yeah, I guess uh, that's one story that always stuck in my head from when I was a kid. My aunt would tell me all the time. So, Wow. Yeah. Your family's like attracted to him, man. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> I found the bridge. It's called the... Uh... Alton Bridge, old Alton Bridge in Flower Mound, Texas, and uh, it's also called the Goatman's Bridge. Oh, because locally the bridge is known as Goatman's Bridge due to a legendary demonic satyr. Is that how you pronounce it? S A T Y R of the same name, who's popular believed to inhabit the forest surrounding the area. Oh, so. I just I just watched a movie about satyr uh, this year, oh, actually, nice. where they talked about the legend. Yeah, it's very slow. wasn't great, but a cool legend for sure. Mm-hmm. That was my goat, man. Scared. <laughs> All right. Uh, her next question. What is the scariest ghost in any film you've seen? The one that spooked you the most? Ooh. So not film, but specific ghost in a, in a film. Um, One that pops in my head right away is the one in The Conjuring on top of the closet there. Or even like... Uh, the one they the witch, you know, what's her name? Bathsheba or something from the first one. Bathsheba. She's fuck, yeah, yeah. She's fucking creepy as hell. So that's, uh, yeah, yeah. That scene on top of the wardrobe, like, gave me shivers and hair standing up and everything. It's freaking mm-hmm. freaky. I was going Conjuring Part Two with uh, Old Man, My mm-hmm. House. That guy's fucking Ooh, yeah. freaky, dude. Mm-hmm. Bill Wilkins. So, is that his name? Yeah. 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 <laughs> We've had it as trivia so so much that (laughs) I retained it. Terrifying. Um, What about the ghost in, is it The Conjuring or Insidious? Insidious, where, is it Insidious? The face behind the guy? 
I was going to say that, but the she is like the older lady who yells at the little boy. Mm-hmm. Oh, that keeps like trying to get close to him in pictures. Yeah. Oh and yeah, she, yeah. Like she has the, the black the bride, the bride. Yeah. in her face. Oh. Is she a bride? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the nun too. Which which we find out is a man in the sequel. True. Yeah. Yeah. True. Man, yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, that's a good one too, for sure. I'm trying isn't, to think of like one when I was a kid. Isn't it played by a woman? No, server? it's no, it's a man that plays it. Is it? Oh. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, and mine's also an Insidious. It's the one behind the crib. It's uh, ah, one of the yeah. first ones you see. Uh, it's just the thought of her like you know going to the crib and there's a, like a man standing over the the baby is just the so scary. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's spooky. I think one of the scary scenes in the first one is when. Lynn Shea is describing the ghost and we don't see it. Ah, uh, yeah. That's mm-hmm. just like so effective with <laughs> Specs is drawing it out. Mm-hmm. Super good. Yep. God, those movies are good. New one's coming out. What? Oh, yeah, that's right. There's a new Insidious <laughs> coming, yeah. Is that the one that I know, is it Patrick Wilson directed? Is that? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll see what happens. I mean, you know, uh, James Wan not being part of these anymore. I'm not... Uh, I'm not sure, you know, Conjuring Three I, also I, not in. So I like all the Insidious movies, so I'm excited. Even like the ones later on in the mm-hmm. franchise, people then like I still dug. So number three is my favorite, man. Yeah, unpopular opinion. Mm-hmm. All right, and one more from last week. If you became a ghost and had to stay in one building for the rest of time, which building would it be and why? <laughs> Ooh. Um. God have to be somewhere where like i could really scare people i guess if i'm gonna be a ghost like so maybe just like an office building or something you know like people stay late and stuff and i could just scare them and get get a good chuckle out of it i'm gonna do the white house so i can peep on like alien stuff (laughs) and like move pens I'll, i'll be the pen moving ghost that'd be fun just pens i'm not doing anything crazy just moving pens. nothing crazy keeping Uh, it pg yeah like he'll go yep. to reach for it on his right hand. It's on his left side now. <laughs> Joe, I'm surprised you didn't say this. Um, I think I would choose Count Orlox, which is a like a monster horror monster museum place here in Salem. And um, it's spooky. There's all sorts of figures inside and I can just scare everyone. And the owners would feed me nachos or give me oh. something. I don't know. I love that. So you'd pretend like you're one of the 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 wax figures and then you just like jump out and scare people mm-hmm. i love it be like a legend like if you leave fresh nacho <laughs> cheese out yeah. she'll come <laughs> you just hear hear munching nacho sam <laughs> the ghost of halloween happy I love it. <laughs> um i like todd's answer because see the thing about buildings is that things change you know uh so white house is pretty much going to stay in the white house for a long time uh mine would be the haunted mansion at disney world uh just because i love the haunted mansion people are mostly always happy when they're at disney world not that's not always the case but uh but then again you know it's a risk because what if they decide to extend it's a small world and then i'm fucking stuck there for a, the rest of time you know? <laughs> <laughs> who knows yeah so uh but still yeah i think haunted mansion would be the most fun for me personally uh all right so her next series of questions was from this week which director would you like to see tackle a zombie film? Ooh, that's a good one. Quentin Tarantino. Ooh, yeah. He was supposed yeah. to do a horror movie. He just hasn't done it. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. Him, him doing a yeah, him doing a zombie movie would be great. Be so violent. <laughs> I'm gonna say Jordan Peele. Oh, okay, interesting. And I will go with. Uh, God, who's the guy who did Doctor Sleep? There, he's he's oh, really yeah. good. Uh, fuck with Mike, Flanagan? Mike Flanagan. Is that yeah. yeah, yeah. I'd like to see him do. Yeah, that's a good answer. Um, I don't know. I, I'd like like to see like Michael Bay do and like someone oh, totally God. ridiculous <laughs> no. that would just make it fucking <laughs> crazy. Because <laughs> that guy doesn't give a shit anymore. He just <laughs> like, you know. Uh, I don't know why. Like all the people that I really want to see make uh, you know a zombie movie have pretty much made zombie movie or something along the same line so yeah it is what it is i think michael bay would be a a crazy one uh all right she goes on to ask what are some of your favorite zombie related autographs Ooh, 
What do I got? You know, I actually don't have a Romero autograph. Oh, which you is bitch. Like, yeah. That's Big like fan. such a, it is. That's a, that, that one's a bummer. I always like skipped over them at cons. Uh, I got Ken Forey, Dawn of the Dead, if that counts, which, what'd you know, you, he's a zombie enough? movie. Uh, just an eight by 10 of him. Like, in Dawn? Yeah, in Dawn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Yes. Giant ass man. Oh, yes, he is. And sexy, too. He's a big, strong, sexy yes. man. And Sam, on her on her other podcast, talked Nickelodeon shows, and he was in Keenan and Kel. Dad was he? Kel. Yeah, he was the dad in Keenan and Kel. <laughs> he's a da- he's a dad of Keenan and Kel. He, he's or the dad of, of Keenan, I think. That's cool. You know, yeah, <laughs> I gotta find that now. It's like super zany. Yeah, he's like does a bunch of like goofy shit in it. So huh. yeah, that's cool. Uh, no, my favorite one is my my Don poster. I got George. Tom Savini, uh, Galen Ross, Scott Renninger. I'm only missing Mr. Uh, MG. I, he was supposed to be at a con. He got sick. So I'm hoping I'm holding out that he does another con so I can meet him and complete the, the cast on it. But nice. I absolutely love that poster. I mean, it's my favorite movie, so, but it's awesome. Sam, you got anything in your collection that's zombie related? I don't believe so. Mm. Sometimes you pull out some gems and we're like, holy shit, like that, <laughs> like the killer clown thing. Yeah. Like, yeah that was yeah, awesome. Yeah, no zombie, oh. no zombie stuff. Cool. Uh, and for me, um, there's a few things like I have each of the three, uh, like main Romero dead films signed by him. Um, nice. So, night, dawn, and day. Uh, and I have a few like other autographs on on them as well you know just kind of trying to get uh, them as i see them i also have the what you uh, meet from dave i'm um, from day uh it's just tom sveeney as a makeup artist and and george, and george. Mm. Signed his, yeah i haven't I, met any of the actors i don't think i met bub howard sherman me too yeah, yeah. right howard sherman or richard sherman no richard sherman's a fucking safety on the <laughs> yeah, he is, yeah. <laughs> <Never mind. laughs> now i got sherman and um oh shoot i can't remember her name now the main girl Lori cardell I believe in Day of the Dead. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, Yeah, and other than those, uh, I also have a Walking Dead poster that I've been doing since I started doing cons. Uh, I think I'm up to 13 or 14 signatures on that. Uh, And all myself, like not none of them that I sent in to get autographed. So that one's special to me. You know, a few of them are dead and stuff. So it's, uh, well, at least one. Who's dead? dead? Um, dead. uh, Herschel. Oh, oh, man, bummer. Yeah, um, he, does, he, he was a little confused when I met him too. Like, really? Oh, yeah. bummer. Does Andrew Lincoln ever do cons that are not like five hundred bucks a pop? Yeah, I've never seen him do a con. I've never really? seen. Him. Like, I I, I, it's funny. So, I the poster I have, uh, it's just like a generic Walking Dead poster because I didn't want a specific season, you know. Mm-hmm. And it has like a zombie in the middle, and then kind of zombies fading out in the back. And I every every fucking time I get an autograph. I'm like, you can sign anywhere, but not the forehead <laughs> because <laughs> I'm like reserving it for Andrew Lincoln one day. <laughs> you know, I told that to Norman Reedus. I told that to fucking Michael Rooker. <laughs> like, Did Norman Reedus go like, I didn't do it. Oh, he was awesome, man. <laughs> Norman Reedus was so it. fucking nice. <laughs> uh, Michael Rooker was a little more like... <laughs> Rooker was super nice, man, when I met him. He, yeah, he I had was my, cool. I had my I son think, with me, and he was really nice. I think the person before me pissed him off, <laughs> and he was in a kind of a bad mood by the time he got to me. Jeez. Uh, yeah, but he wasn't mean. He was just kind of like standoffish, I guess. Yeah, he, he was talking to my son about uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. He was doing his Yon, Yondu, was his character, yeah. I think. Mm-hmm. Doing some quotes from that. He was really cool. That's, yeah. cool. That, that, that's why I met him. He was, he was there for Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm. One of my biggest regrets I never did was uh, the very first year I went to Texas Frightmare Weekend, they had a photo op with Romero and Howard Sherman in bub makeup that Savini did because Savini was at the con. And it's like, that would have been so I saw cool. I saw people's pictures and it was so fucking cool. But I decided to do the slasher photo op instead, which was because uh, it was expensive. I mean, they were expensive, but I did the slash photo op too, with, which was with. Uh, Robert England, Kane Hodder, Tony Todd, and uh, Dick Warlock. That's uh, a good so, one, too. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. 50-50 on that toss-up. Yeah, it was tough. It was a tough choice. Because if I did both, it would have been like 400 bucks or something like that because they were expensive. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, I, I'm at the point now where if it's someone I even semi-like, I'm going to get their autograph because I'm so afraid that something's going to happen or I'll never see them again. It's a, 
it's tough man like cons especially cons that are all horror it's like oh who do you pick you know who do you... um all right and her one more question she has what are some of your favorite zombie related items in your collection you know i i gotta admit i don't have like a ton of zombie stuff like zombie the zombie genre was never like i mean obviously you know dawn and day like instead in return like i love but i don't have a ton of stuff i have like a couple of special edition blu-rays i have but other than that Ooh, what you got what you got i really play? don't man they're old they're honestly in storage i don't even have them out oh, on display right. um but when i pull them out i'll, I'll show you <laughs> they're from the early 2000s so they're dvds yeah yeah mm-hmm. did i hear blu-rays yeah they're yeah, DVDs. do you have do you have the dawn <laughs> black set that's like four disc dvd because that's pretty valuable quite now. Quite possibly, yeah. I have a few different sets. Like I, I was like super into collecting DVDs, and I sold off most of them, but I kept those ones. Yeah, um, I have a lot of figures from Don. Those are cool. Um, but my probably my favorite piece right now is the newest Dawn of the Dead 4K edition that came with like a book, or I mean, yeah, book. The novel novelization of the book or the movie, which is really cool, um, came from Second Sight Official, which like they sold out in a matter of minutes. So. It's a really cool set. It goes for like 300 bucks now on eBay, but it's good stuff. I sent you guys a, a photo of what that photo op would look like. I'll put it, I'll put it in the discord too, for people who might want to see it. Awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah. I also don't have a ton of zombie like items um, as you know, especially really related to movies and stuff. I guess my two favorite would be uh, I have Tarman and the little girl from the original Night of the Living Dead as uh, lawn no- uh, like gnomes uh, that I got from Revenant FX. Uh, so those are really cool. Tarman especially, I think it looks fucking badass. Uh, so those are probably my two favorite zombie related items I own. Yeah, there's a Tarman figure I definitely want to pick up. I forget who makes it but it's really, really cool. I have that one. I Do think you? Yeah. Yeah. I got mm-hmm. it. I think, no, I didn't buy it from Troutman. I might have actually, because he always That's sells cool. them at his table. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're t- kind of tougher to find, being tough, yeah, tougher to find now. Yeah. It's not from like a super popular it's company. Uh, Monstars? Yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. sounds right. Yeah, and then... Uh, what do I got? Oh, I got a zombie doorstop. I got from horror block years from Steve. Probably got that one too. Oh, yeah, I, I got the the, it's the doorstop, the back scratcher. Yeah, I got there's that, like yeah. three things uh, in a row that were super like weird. Mm-hmm. I yeah. think the other one was um, a wine like thing that you put on top, like a yep. yeah, yeah. So. I think I think in that same box was the autograph of the little girl zombie from Walking Dead too, like the teddy yeah. bear girl mm-hmm. zombie. Yeah. Yeah, it's Monstars, Joe, from uh, okay, cool. A Muck Time Toys. Yeah. yeah, what do they? I feel like they run for like set between seventy-five and a hundred now for that figure. Th- this one's two hundred bucks. I Ooh, don't know if that's like the yeah. medium or the. It's probably man. It's probably prices have been going crazy. Like, I remember like there, there's that Michael. Uh, it's a double set of like Michael of oh, and- Michael Myers and then him in the clown outfit like as a kid. I think it NECA made it back in like 2005. That thing cheap now is like 500 bucks. It's fucking Whoa, insane. That's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. And yeah. Then like the, the ghost sheet Myers too is like the prices on that. Like anything Myers right now is crazy. So the cheapest price is 174 on eBay. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it must be out of print, obviously. It's yeah. crazy. Well, I doubt I'll be getting that one then. <laughs> All right. So, and her last question was, uh, watch your live stream. Loved it. Uh, when is your next one? Thank you. When, uh, the, when the angels win the pennant. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure. We'll, actually, maybe I don't know. We'll have to discuss it, but we'll definitely be doing another one. So keep your keep your eyes open. Yeah, and I'd like to get some feedback as to what worked and what didn't. You know, it was our first yeah. one. We kind of didn't know what we were doing, so uh, let us know about that. Uh, all right. Next series of questions comes to us from Rinfa. Uh, so the question is: What would your special high skill be? High skill. Heist. Oh, oh heist. heist skill. Ooh. <laughs> That's a good and question. I don't I, I something to do if they needed someone to power something up, maybe. Uh, oh yeah, you'd <laughs> so be the, the I'd be mechanic. the elect yeah, I'd be the electrician guy. You'd be getting the, the helicopter going. Yeah, I'd be running the generator in this, like how they got the generator started up. That'd be me in the super super easily. <laughs> <laughs> I get it done. I get it That's done. true. I like that. Uh, I'll do. I'll be security. I'll be like, you guys fuck around the the vault. I'm holding down the the hallway here. 
This is tough. I feel like I, I don't know what this skill could be called, but this is what I would do. I would predict the behavior of whoever we're trying to defeat or okay. get one. You find the on. weakness. You're like the yeah. clair, like a clairvoyant, like a like a aim psych- for the person. neck or something yeah. like that. Something like that. Or like I'd be a multitasker where I, instead of the job being super complicated and having more people where we would have to share the money, I could like multitask the jobs and break it down to like four to where we get paid more. Uh, for me, I I think I'd be the planner. Um, I do that for work. <laughs> you know, I, I plan giant projects out, uh, make sure everyone's doing their shit. And uh, yeah, I think that that would be my job. Kind of the guy who sets it all up. And Love um, it. All right. So next question. What's your opinion on fast zombies? You know, I didn't like them the first time I ever saw them, but now I dig them. For sure. Like, I think it brings something different. It, like, definitely is scarier. And there's no real escaping them. So you're like, ah, fuck. Yeah, there's no getting away with this. You can't... I mean, your cardio is not going to last outlast them. So you're kind of (laughs) screwed. So I like them. I I like like... them, too. Sorry, Sam, go ahead. No, it's okay. I was just saying I like them. I I just don't like when they're like Spider-Man, though, where they start climbing over stuff and they don't move like humans anymore that kind of bugs me like in like world in war z world war z yeah, yeah. Where they're like p- piling up and stuff that's fucking terrifying though. that scene was cool it is yeah <laughs> that is a cool scene and I, yeah but i prefer them to be like normally you know human physics things like that okay well we can talk about it later but uh i want to hear everyone's thoughts on smart zombies as well but we'll always save that for the okay. review yeah. And I, I agree with you guys. I, I like uh, fast zombies. Uh, I think there's a place for both slow zombies and fast zombies in cinema. Uh, it just depends on the story you put around it. Um, at first, when I first saw fast zombies, I was kind of like, Ugh, this isn't a zombie. But then, you know, 28 Days Later and uh, Dawn of the Dead remake, you know, kind of put, okay, it's like, okay, we, we can do this. It, it could be still really cool. It's just mm-hmm. a different, it's a whole different thing. So. I, f- I feel well, like- especially if the government is trying to get us, why wouldn't there be fast zombies? Because they can kill us faster yep. with less resources. So watch Very out. True. Better get your cardio up so you can try to run. <laughs> I feel is 28 days later, were they was that like the origins of the fast zombie? I mean, I'm sure there was something before. Uh, like, that was, it's probably the one that popularized it. That was yeah, 2001, right? I believe. Yeah. Yeah. If you count um, those as zombies, I guess. Yeah, it's the same realm. Why wouldn't infected. I? They're so, not oh, dead, technically. Yeah. What? They're, they're infected with rage. Mm-hmm. Okay, is this going to be like a discovery of Jason Bourne in the 40s? So people are <laughs> saying those aren't zombies. <laughs> people are saying those aren't zombies in 28 Days Later? Well, they're not because they're not dead. That's the argument. Not yet. I mean, but- I consider them <laughs> zombies, but like, it's a different- technically not. It's a different type of zombie, though. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's like they can can't do- go to work and they can't drive cars and do stuff that humans can. So why would it just be that they're infected? Mm-hmm. Infected with what? You said they're infected with rage. Rage. I was doing the quote from the 28 Days Later, mm-hmm. <laughs> but no one closed. I just right, need to Dad. stop. I need to stop. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about that. I saw that movie on a first date, and I was just wondering what the guy was up to. I might have to look him up on Facebook. What's the name? Drop the name. <laughs> oh. Johnny Appleseed. Jim. No. Craig. Tony. Kyle. Derek. Oh, Samson. All right. <laughs> Polly. Let's, let's move it I'll along, guys. <laughs> Polly. Polly. Hey, Polly, take me Polly to the D. Days later. Do I look like I would date a guy named Polly? <laughs> hey, come on. Well, he goes, I mean, Paul, but you nicknamed him Polly. You guys fell in love. But then he said I, Michael I Myers was lame. I did date Paul. He was an a hole, though. He didn't like Michael Myers, probably. <laughs> Okay, moving along. <laughs> uh, all right. And the last question here was, what's a location that isn't commonly seen or used that you would like to see more of in horror movies? Amusement Ooh. parks. Ooh. I want to see my, there's like not that. a lot. and There's, there's a few. few. Right. Zombieland's got one. Yeah, there's yeah. A few, definitely a few. Like, and Walking we actually, Dead has them. They do? When's Walking Dead have one? Um, in the season that I stopped yeah, at, yeah, oh, they, okay. they had they had one. Eight, mm-hmm, right. Mm-hmm. Oh, is that the one with the bad deer? 
bad deer. There was a uh, scene where there's a no. I think that was in a carnival or something. I guess similar. No, there was a deer somewhere yeah. in there. M- Michonne and Rick get it on though. In yeah. That episode. So <laughs> they get yeah. the dirty, dirty deed. We got a couple of from what, last year, two years ago, where we got Hellfest and uh, Haunt and stuff. But I, I, I want to see like a legit amusement park, like a big one. And we for got zom- that. We for got zombies, that. Though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Hmm. Okay, Joe. <laughs> Leave me alone. I'm just teasing. <laughs> um, this is a tough question. Yeah. How about like a ship? That'd be cool. I was gonna, on a boat. Uh, underwater would be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Space. Yeah. So zombies take Manhattan? Is that what you're there thinking, you Todd? <laughs> I'm thinking like big old cruise ship, carnival cruise ship or something. That'd, That'd be, dope. be scary. Oh, get this. Here's my pitch. Zombie apocalypse, right? Where at the beginning of it, it's like everyone's like scrambling, like we got a guy, blah blah blah. Let's go on the cruise ship. A bunch of people go on the cruise ship. Are they safe? No, because there's infected on board, and then the infection spreads. You know, Todd, like that's that. one of my worst nightmares because I well remember when COVID started happening. Like those people were quarantined on the yeah, ship for two sucks. months. I was like, what if this is how the zombie virus <laughs> outbreaks? You know, mm. all the people like close Very proximity true. mutations and all that. Mm-hmm. Oh, I got an idea for my opening scene for the zombie amusement park ride. All right, so the guy's like, he's the, he's patient zero, right? And he gets on the roller coaster, and they're all like strapped in, and all of a sudden he turns like while they're on the roller coaster, and he's like trying to bite the guy next to him, like while they're like going down the coaster. That'd be so I like cool. it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Copyright trademark cannot use it. Yeah, no, it's awesome. Uh, yeah, for, I, I love carnival, anything in the carnival, so I'd totally be down for that. Uh, and the ship kind of goes back to what we were talking about last week with this uh, space. Uh, I like that they're stuck somewhere. You know, there's nowhere really to go. And that's something we, I, unfortunately, we don't see enough of. I think I always uh, enjoy those. Um, I, I could just picture a zombie in like a space suit just like floating through space. Like. And a bite, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he just like burns up into the atmosphere. Oh, there you go. And that's how it starts. Like he just... <laughs> uh, I, I want to see a movie as this is where on the zombie thing where there's a zombie outbreak. I like the Oscars where they, they get cast a bunch of famous people and you don't know who's going to survive and they just randomly kill off people and it comes a game of which one is the bigger enough star to survive this movie. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that, that's what um, I would like. All right. Um, Elm Street. <laughs> Tommy Cruz for the win. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so next series of questions comes to us from Captain Amazing 85 So Sam, oh. he wants that food pairing, please. <laughs> Steve reminded me, but I had already forgotten. <laughs> well, okay, so it takes pl- place in Vegas. So what do people like to eat in Vegas? Like sushi, buffets, steak, dude. and buffet. Buffets. Um, Is this like fake food or is it real food? Like what do you mean by fake? Food? <laughs> sure. I mean, hey, whatever you want. It's your food pairing. Um. Okay, so how about like um, a buffet of... Like those little weenies that are in barbecue sauce, and then it looks like intestines. Um, maybe some brain cupcakes for the people with the sweet tooth, where the icing looks like a brain. Um, what else? What else? What about maybe spaghetti. Th- yeah, S- spaghetti. Some meat mm-hmm. sauce. Some meat sauce. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. <clears throat> garlic some... bread shaped like bones yeah yeah that carrots. Good. Garlic bread. carrots that look like fingers who's eating carrots at the... <laughs> get out of here <laughs> this is why your halloween parties <laughs> just cool. like you i got the carrots are, thanks <laughs> and then also maybe like a head on a stick but it could be like um made out of um I don't know. I'm lost here. Hamburger. Rice Krispie Treat. Oh. Okay. I like the Rice Krispie Treat, Todd. And it could be like the queen's head on a stick. Ooh. Oh, the queen. Where, where are we getting oh. the queen from, though? Spoiler alert. Oh, 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 never mind. <laughs> Is it a spoiler alert? I don't know. I'll have to wait and see. Cool. Well, thank you very much, Sam. Uh, no, checks, thank you. 
Chuck's for allowing Texas. me to talk about food. <laughs> we talk a lot about food. So uh, fun fact, uh, I talked about it last week, but uh, I took last week's episode and put pictures to it to release on YouTube, which is going to come out the same day as this one. And we talk about food a lot. <laughs> so there's a lot of food pics in, <laughs> in that episode. So uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy that episode. I don't know if I'm going to do another one. It was way more work than I expected. But one of them's done. So enjoy it. It's over on our YouTube account, which is the Horror Squad podcast. Uh, so Chuck's next question. What era in time would you like to see a zombie movie in? I would love to see some steampunk zombies. Interesting. Um, I don't know. Um, I'd future, like futuristic, like something crazy, like Tron, Trombies. I like it. Thank you. Let's do like Rome. Let's get some gladiators mm. versus zombies. Oh, that's fun. Um, I don't really know. I Mine's like, basic. I would just do a decade and it would be the 90s. Oh, okay. 90s zombies. Love it. Ooh, 70s zombies like disco. That could be fun. Oh, yeah. yeah. Partying at, what was it? Studio 54? 54. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nice. Um, and for me, I'm, I'm going way back in time. I love the Egyptian era. Uh, so pharaohs and shit like that. And then you can also have mummies because mummies mm-hmm. are essentially dead people in, in raps. So I think it'd be cool to see an Egyptian, like, high-budget zombie film. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. And his last question, which is going to be the last question for now, because all the other questions are related to the movie tonight, which we have quite a few. Nice. Which squad member would you sacrifice <laughs> to buy passage? Wow. This is, I mean, I'm... I think you got to get a fifth member, but hey, you want to come on as a fifth member? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I like that. Yeah, I wouldn't want to sacrifice any of them. So I would be like, hey, you want to join our podcast? You'd be our fifth member, and then we just bring them. And then yeah, we, just like in this yeah. movie. Mm-hmm, totally. So sorry. I'd be like, I'd message someone from the Discord private, be like, hey, man, congratulations. Not, not from the Discord. <laughs> <laughs> not from the Discord. I like those people. I'd anyway. message someone from a different podcast and then tell oh. them. Ooh, ruthless. <laughs> and it would probably be Ryan for bashing all the A24 movies. Oh my so God. Sorry, I would just get Theo Rossi to come on somehow. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Got that Dude, mustache, eh? Ooh, gosh. Yeah. What are they thinking? I, yeah. I, I love Theo Rossi, but that mustache was. Uh... He's, a little, he's a little prick, man. Yeah. What else has Theo Rossi been in? He's in Sons of Anarchy. That's what he's okay. mostly known for. Yeah. He's also Juice, in. Uh, right? Juice? Lu- yeah, Juice and Sons I of Anarchy. I feel like him and Todd could be brothers. <laughs> Yeah, he people doesn't... think I'm Hispanic. Uh, I think he might be Italian, though, because I'm Italian. He wasn't. Well, I mean, in... just the way that you guys look. He wasn't in Ghost of War, was he, Steve? He was. He looked... Okay, yeah, he was. He was. Right. he was also in Luke Cage, if you watch that. Nice. So he's been so, around. So he's been in two military based <laughs> horror movies recently. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure. And for, I, I'd sacrifice myself, honestly. I wouldn't let anyone oh. else on the squad. I mean, I'm the oldest. You cut your own head <laughs> off? What? You I cut your own head off? No, they, they do Spoiler. that. Spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> they, they take me away. And, uh, yeah, so that, that would be my answer there. And that's all the questions Such we got for nice now. nice guy, Steve. Well, you know, I'm the oldest. I mean, that's only fair, right? For like four <laughs> years. <laughs> oh. Just hope you're not getting mauled by a zombie tiger, though. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know what? Anyway, I don't want to spoil it, but the zombies have sex in this world, so it's not too bad. <laughs> oh, apparently, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so I'll ask the rest of the questions after the review of the movie, because there are some really interesting ones uh, based on the movie, so look forward to All that. Right. Like zombie Mickey Rourke. Actually, speaking of zombies, Deadly Grounds Coffee. Everyone thinks because you're a zombie, you don't know good coffee. Well, they're wrong. There's only one brew that gets my seal of approval. Deadly Grounds coffee is my guilty pleasure. The aroma is so intoxicating. It brings all of my neighbors out of the woodwork. Deadly Grounds coffee. Coffee to die for and zombie approved. It's good to get a little deadly. Use the front door! Oh, they're so disgusting. All right. What watched? (laughs) Yep. Um, I'm gonna lead it off. I watched uh, one of our one of your guys' reviews actually, Psycho Gorman, 
uh, which is a 2021 release. It's now streaming on Shutter for all the people that weren't able to see it. I um, I am right there with Joe, and then also right there with Steve. But I lean to- more towards Joe because um, I love the movie, man. It's about uh, two kids that discover a, I guess like demi demigod or whatever buried in Earth. Um, they control him because they have like an amulet or something, and he has to do whatever they say. So they make him do a bunch of crazy shit, and he's Meanwhile, he's being hunted by like another planetary force called the, what are they called? Um, something, I don't know. They want to come kill him. Um, my main issue though, like Steve, is that the girl to me is incredibly annoying. Um, it's not her acting, it's the way they made her act, if that makes sense, and, and the writing for her. Just like incredibly in your face the entire time. Um, over the top, just like, I, I just didn't buy it. And I, oh my God, she's in there way too much to be talking like that. Uh, I wish they would have made her more sweet, like the um, her brother character. And then the comedy besides Psycho Gorman's like unintentional funny moments where he's just like being normal, but it's funny. Um, didn't really land with me, especially a lot of the dad stuff. And the musical stuff at the end was like, ugh. But all that being said, like I still really loved it and it's currently sitting in my top 10. Um, so yeah, I recommend it. So it's on Shutter. Nice. Uh, I'll go next. Um, and Sam, Sam can jump in on this one too if she'd like. Um, unless you wanted to talk about, where's that one of yours for tonight, Sam? The, uh, the podcast. Um, I was did? just gonna talk about it, like behind you guys. So you go for it. Okay, cool. Uh, so Sam and I's first one tonight is uh, from two thousand five. And it is Blood Rain. And we both watched this one because we actually um, guest hosted on a podcast called 8-Bit Movie Review. Um, It is um, an old childhood friend of mine, actually, who uh, does that podcast. And he messaged me um, kind of out of the blue because I haven't talked to him in like quite a long time. So it was nice to catch up with him uh, on there. But yeah, check it out. Uh, The episode will be dropping the same day you guys... Uh, hear this one on uh, this Friday and we went like full depth into this movie like breakdown like scene for scene so we did quite a lot on it but uh, anyway Blood Rain 2005 based on the uh, video game basically about a a woman who is a vampire whose mother is murdered and basically she goes on a quest of revenge uh, and yeah, uh, this one directed by Todd's favorite director, U Bowl, of course. Classic House of the Dead, <laughs> ten yeah. out of ten. Hey, real quick, why 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 this movie for his podcast? Does he go after bad movies? No, so I mean they'll do anything video game based. Um, they do uh, that's like their thing. Like and the video games where there's movies based movies, off of yeah. the video. Oh, game. Okay. yes. Okay, cool. That's cool. so yeah. So like last week they did Pixels, and they've done. Uh, Mortal Kombat recently. They did uh, Street Fighter 2. They did, you know, everything. Uh, but yeah, so we checked this one out. They had us on because, you know, it's basically horror based. So that's why they, they invited us on to do this one. And yeah, this movie's pretty bad. <laughs> I had never seen it before. Um, so I was like interested. And then I checked like the reviews and I saw like it had like a one point like something on Letterboxd. So I was like, holy shit, this movie's going to be awful. And it was very bad, but it wasn't like the worst movie I've ever seen. Um, but it still was not good, like whatsoever. Very dull. Uh, and just like we get like really more into it in the podcast. So go and check out their uh, thing, 8 bit review. But Sam, what do you think of it? Um, so I was telling, uh, Josh and Andrew, who are the host of the podcast that Joe's telling you guys about that over here, I always talk about uh, if it's a laundry movie. So that's how I described this one where it, I liked it better than I thought I would and better than Joe and Andrew and Josh did. I didn't hate myself for watching it. Um, but there were some little things about it, like the costume, the costuming and stuff that they decided to go with the main character, it just didn't fit the time error that the rest of everyone else was in. Um, but I will say there is a boss that she comes up on and I don't remember his name, but Steve, you've seen it, right? 
long time ago yeah oh uh, okay well anyways it's like he was a pretty cool looking boss like he had a cool mask on and i was like oh man this is gonna be so awesome and then like after that scene was done and over with that was the only like little boner i get i got to have apparently um because it just went downhill after that and also there was a random sex scene in it that just was so bizarre and so i like, I like that scene you like that it just didn't make sense that's the only thing i remember i don't think she she wouldn't have been worried about writing that d you know <laughs> yeah she, she read it been. she read it though <laughs> she, she did yeah she did but <laughs> she did no the best that's part i remember the movie, yeah the but i talk about this in uh the review but the best part for me was meatloaf uh, Meatloaf is in that movie. I don't remember that. <laughs> he's like he's like a vampire that like runs like an orgy, and he has like all these like oh. young like prostitutes around him, and he's like putting blood on their nipples and stuff like that. Oh. It's so fucking bizarre. And Michael Madsen just fucking is just like his performance is so bad in it. Like that's Mr. He's, Blonde, right? Yes, he he's yeah. just like man, he gives nothing in that role. And then Ben Kingsley is in it. Like it's actually like a pretty impressive cast, but holy shit, is it a bad movie? Wow, there's a lot of these movies. They have quite the series. Yeah, I think it's a trilogy. I think there was three of them. And I, I, I have no interest in going to this in the second she goes to like the Wild West, and then the third one she fights like Nazis. Nazis, yeah. Yeah. But you know what Ubol's my favorite movie from Ubol is um Postal. Postal. I was gonna say yeah. Postal and you know, Rampage. Todd, that's Rampage what they good. said. So they were they... talking about what's his name? U Bull. Yeah. yeah. German guy. And they were just telling me about like how crazy he is and kind of what an asshole and douchebag he is. And then mm-hmm. Joe also said that you didn't like him. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, I need to talk to Todd about this. But I said if there was another movie of his that they would recommend me watching, so I can kind of get the gist of him, they recommended Postal. Still is good. Rampage is good too. It, it didn't age well though, it's, it, especially in the like the era we live in with active shooters. It's bad. It's about active shooter. Oh yeah. That like covers it up and pins it on his friend. But the movie oh. was good. But like you're kind of like you know politically tone deaf. Um, but no, he's he's weird. I'm sure you guys. He they told you about like his boxing thing with critics mm-hmm. and how he beat the shit out of them. It was supposed to be like a friendly thing, and he trained for it. Like, geez, dude so bizarre yeah he's good man look at some youtube shit like he goes on <laughs> crazy tangents so about the avengers and stuff hmm. pretty crazy uh sam do you have one now have one what um, a movie that blood rain sex scene duh blood and, rain oh, no, but yeah. that was joe's too i didn't know if you had your own there um no and then i was just gonna jump in briefly when you guys talk about um Sound the of uh, I'll just do one another one before we do the sound of violence. So uh, I watched a 20, 2002 movie uh, over on Tubi called Filthy McNasty. Um, so this movie Perceiver. is but yeah, that's right, yeah. Perceiver. Yeah. Uh, so it's about I stole these two. My money once. That's a story for another fucking. Time. Oh really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so so this movie is about uh, these two girls who are kind of nerds and they're not popular and they want to go to a party but no one wants to invite them so they su- they get this weird guy like comes into play and they summon this demon filthy McNasty to turn them into hot women but the um, now that they he did that the demon's out and he goes to the party too and starts killing off people and it is a complete fucking mess of a film uh it's very low budget i mean it's mostly takes place in like one hallway of a high school and then at one person's house for the party uh the kills are very um amateur not too inventive either um there's just not a lot to like about this movie the acting is beyond terrible there's one character i swear to god uh, it got a half star on letterbox for that one character alone like he was so annoying that i, I couldn't so i would definitely not recommend this one and there's four of them which just blows my mind uh maybe the other ones are better i don't know um they're not on tubi so i thankfully can't force myself to watch them but uh yeah not one i would recommend that's filthy Ming nasty on tubi is teen ape in that one teen yeah yeah yes yeah teen ape <laughs> yeah i used to love uh chris Eber stuff when i was a teenager um no all those people are his friends that explains like the, the acting shocker <laughs> yeah. um but he, he's got ones called like uh anal paprika um blood fart lake stuff like that <laughs> so stupid movies like that 
Yeah, they're yeah. pretty bad. Like, like I, I appreciate the hustle. You know, like if I were a teen, I'd be making stupid films with my friends too. So I appreciate that side of it. But as you know, almost a forty-year-old who's watching horror movies, yeah. I would not recommend this one. The, the, the problem too, I think, with Chris is like he's never really improved his craft. You know, and like if you see any of like the the latest ones, like they're still pretty much on that level. Yeah. So usually people start off like that and then kind of learn yeah. and do no this okay. Well, Steve, would you like to talk about Army of the Dead? Let's do it. <laughs> okay. I really want to talk about the stand because I finished that, but I guess I'll save it. Um, but Army of the Dead, not the one we're talking about later, the one that Joe jokingly put in our chat, uh, asking if it was this one. It the cover, you just gotta go Google, Google the cover or you guys can put it in Discord or whatever, but this one came out in 2008, and it's <laughs> it's a CGI skeleton-filled film currently on Tubi, and it's like a basic setup where, like, um, you know, back in conquistador days, whatever, they awaken some force that's like deem or I guess skeletons. I don't know. I didn't follow the story, <laughs> but um, fast forward, and there's like archaeological hangout dig, whatever. And there's also a legend where this guy was killed by skeletons a few years ago, and they happen to be in the same area. Long story short, they awaken the skeletons again, and you've got goons trying to kill the main characters, and you got a professor that looks like Tom Savini. Um, and you know what? Like, it's a it's this extremely low budget movie. It's really stupid, but it's also pretty cool. Um, the CGI doesn't look terrible. It's bad, but it doesn't look terrible. And I, I had a good time with it, man. Steve, what do you think? Yeah, so when I when I started the movie, uh, I was like half an hour in and Todd asked me, like, should I watch this or will I, you know, finish this film? And I said, probably not. It's got a cheap sci-fi feel. But if you get past that first half hour where not too much happens uh, and the skeletons start attacking and stuff, it gets actually pretty cool. Like the skeletons are stop motion uh, and they're, they're actually really well done. They kind of reminded me of the skeletons in Army of Darkness, uh, the way that they moved and the stuff like that and the way that they looked. And it was actually quite entertaining. Um, the story is forgettable. You know, there's this whole side story about a guy who is apparently not Chris Pine, but looks a lot like Chris Pine. Did you read my review for it? No. Chris Pine, Tom Savini, Tiffany Shepis, uh uh, the girl from freaking uh, Denise Richards looks like the girl. Yeah, I'm like, where, totally. where do they get these kids from? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but him especially, man. He he, fuck, I, I could have been fooled that that was Chris Pine if I saw a quick picture of him. Um, but anyway, so yeah, there's a whole side story where his ex girlfriend's on the expedition and she's trying to get him back and like all that stuff. I, I didn't need that stuff, you know. I didn't need all this filler. Uh, the skeleton action is where it's at. Uh, we don't see enough skeletons in horror movies, you know. We see a lot of zombies. We see a lot of other things, but fighting skeletons, man, they're due for a comeback. Uh, I would love to see more, but I, I would say check it out. Honestly, it's on Tubi, and I think it's a decent film. If you have a group too, I think the group would have a lot of fun with it. Tubi. 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 Dad. Oh, daddy. <laughs> Spoiler alert: The Stand miniseries sucks ass. Oh, <laughs> the original, it's us. Original one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the original. Come on. Sucks balls. You don't like Kareem? <laughs> good thing he's only in there for like three scenes yeah <laughs> uh, all right um steve you want to talk and sam because sam watched it too actually Absolutely. um our interview tonight the sound of violence and whispered the sound of violence sound of the music is it really classic though i really like it <laughs> Did you guys ever watch that i've actually never seen it really i it was like a when we have sleepovers at my grandparents' house, he used to have VHS tapes of musicals, and we'd mm. always watch freaking Sound of Music. Yeah, okay. it, it was required in film school for me. Like, was it? It's, yeah, it's one of the movies they made us watch. Well, it was required in choir for me. Wow. <laughs> wow. I feel like that could be... I I think they did a horror trailer on that, Steve. Oh, did they? Oh, I got to check that out. Wow. Mm-hmm. It's a good movie. <laughs> All right. So anyway, uh, The Sound of Violence, 2021 release. Uh, make sure to stick around for our interview with Alex Neuer, which yeah, I, called him Alex, I called him Alex Neuer, but he said he's so used to everyone calling him <laughs> Alex Neuer uh, since he's Way you to know, go, Joe. here for 20. No, he even, uh, even at the end, he's like, oh no, he's like, I even introduced myself as Alex Neuer to people now. Cause like, that's just how I would, everyone calls me. And he, even in the intro, 
uh, to the episode, which you probably heard. He even says Alex Neuer. So right. I, didn't, I didn't feel as bad anymore. All right, yeah. Alex. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, super nice guy. So make sure you stick around for it. Uh, but yeah, so this one uh, is about a uh, young girl who is... Um, so hey, he looks like Steve right there. Someone who, Alex Neuer? Wait, hang on. <laughs> oh, it's not going to show up. Yeah. Someone uh, in the Discord actually said they thought it was a knockoff version of Todd when we posted the interview, <laughs> in, <laughs> which I thought was pretty funny. But uh, anyway, Sound of Violence. Um, so basically, it's about uh, this girl who loses her hearing. Um, or I, I don't know. Is she born deaf, Steve? Or she has like a condition? No, where no she, she had an accident. Okay. Yeah. But we don't, so, we don't know what, but she, right. she had some kind of accident that made her deaf. Right. So we, I mean, the movie opens with, you know, her as a child and um, tragedy, bef I don't want to get a uh, spoiler or anything, but tragedy basically befalls her in her childhood. And in that tragedy, she actually gains her hearing back. Um, and we uh, flash forward to her now uh, in college, I guess it is. Um, she's like at, uh, you know, sort of like some sort of music school. And uh, essentially she starts using um murder as a way to uh get satisfaction uh and uses the murder also uh like basically sounds like turn her on like basically it's like almost like an arousal for her so she starts using uh she starts murdering people and uses the sounds as like a so a sense of like escapism and uh like arousal i guess sort of um and uh, i mean yeah i mean i'll leave it at that uh this movie is super unique like super unique super interesting like i give this point this movie massive points for originality because like i had never seen like something like this uh this original in a while so i, I give it mad props for that um i think this is like two or like 85 percent a great movie and then, uh, to me, the ending falls a little flat for me personally, but I enjoyed the ride and everything else so much. And the lead actress in this is just fantastic that, I mean, it's it's very good. I, it's right now probably like on the tail end of my top 10 currently. Um, it, you know, it's really good. And I definitely recommend checking it out. Um, okay, so I didn't watch every single second of it but I kept popping in and out because I was doing stuff in my office um but like Joe said it is really original I've never seen anything like it I thought it was pretty creative and some of the kills like it was too much for me to watch you guys I was like I kept yelling at Joe I was like Joe this is really fucked up I was like I don't think I can fucking watch this and then I kept sitting on the couch and I was like I because right when it started I knew it looked good and I was like I wish this didn't look good so I can go in my office and do what I needed to get done but I kept like coming outside and I was just like squealing and it just made me feel gross like in a good way because I hadn't seen anything like it in a while or whatever as far as the kills it, I just felt like a lot of empathy for the people that were being killed and it was just like I don't know it just kind of made me feel sick in my guts in a good way um but I will say the end just because of how the kills built me up the end did fall a little flat for me because I like to spiral. And so I, in my head, I had it planned. I'm like, oh my God, it's been so fucked up that this is how it's going to end. But it didn't end, end like that. I mean, it was still good. Um, I think I, it was just my own fault for building it up, but I definitely recommend people checking it out. Yeah. And I echo what both of them uh, said. I, I really enjoyed this movie. Uh, it's currently in my top five of the year. Same. but probably won't stay there you know it's just one of those that's still early in the year for me uh, and stuff like that but it is a movie i think people should check out because it is so unique i love how he plays music into mm -hmm. uh the in a new way like the genre and stuff uh it's it's like it's it's just really cool i mean you have uh jasmine brown who plays alexis the main actress is just fantastic and you also have um mick jagger's uh, son uh play in in the movie as well and that was really cool um yeah this movie's awesome man there's just a lot to love about it i do agree that the end was a little far-fetched to the point where it's like uh 
you know, maybe they could have found something stronger, but uh, we won't spoil what that is because it's still a new film. But I do urge people to check it out if they get a chance because uh, of how unique it is and how good it is, honestly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the kills are all like really cool too. Like, yeah. there's especially like that first, oh man, that first kill is like fucking awesome and like so cool. Uh, and then there's a scene with a, a harp that's like so memorable. It is so cool. Uh, so yeah, I mean, this, I mean, for a feature debut for this, for a director, this guy, I mean, I am very excited to see what this guy, and he is a horror fan. Like we talked to him about horror. He's definitely passionate about the genre. So I know he's definitely going to keep making horror movies, which he has some stuff, I guess, in the works, which he couldn't really, um, tell us too much about, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see what this guy does next. Cause I think he has fantastic potential. Absolutely. Will, will this be streaming soon, guys and gal? We don't it's, know. It's on VOD currently. Um, I don't know, you know, if it's going to come anywhere free. But yeah. I, honestly, like, I'm not sure what it costs. Like, if it's like a three nine nine rental, I'd say it's worth it just for the fact of the originality alone. Uh, yeah. It, you, sometimes we see the Shutter logo before, but this one didn't, so I don't mm-hmm. think it's a Shutter film. Yeah. Uh, it'll probably pop up at some time on some kind of uh, service. But like Joe said, I think this is one worth putting some money into because uh it's good it's a really good film yeah mm-hmm. I don't, 4, I don't 4, have 4.99 oh, yeah, perfect i'd say yeah i'd say I, worth it on say amazon worth it. Mm-hmm. cool oh it looks like she's like having an orgasm on the fucking oh she yeah. does oh yeah. yeah she does right. she, like she has quite a lot of like uh <laughs> <laughs> sound orgasms throughout the movie oh and we didn't even mention man the visuals in this movie are like really cool like he does yeah. some really cool stuff with uh like colors and shit and it's just like really uh really cool yeah that's something that we talked to him about is he somehow found a way to visualize her feelings towards music mm-hmm. and that's a hard thing to do like and make it actually good uh, and he did it beautifully i think mm-hmm. well super well shot film that's there's yeah. a lot to like about this one, so check it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the traps she does are kind of saw-like in a way, which I know <laughs> yes. he said he said people were trying to like comparing it at one point, which you'll hear in the interview, which he was like, no, it's not like that at all. But <laughs> it's, that first trap is definitely saw-like, I think. <laughs> all right, trivia? Yeah, no. Real... <laughs> no? Okay. No, yeah, yeah. The show. Thanks for seeing <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yo, did you start off season yet? I haven't. I will get into it very Dirty shortly. Dirty little rat, dude. I, I'll, trust me, I'll get I it. I finished it already. Did you? Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you need to give him a deadline. That's the only way. I do, yeah. <laughs> I know. And uh, no, I'll, no, like I'll have days. it <laughs> end, of, end, end of June, before the end of June. All 100%. Right. Let's we'll get do it. Done. it. Done. Okay. Yeah, for the yeah. readers or the listeners, off-season, Jay, uh, Jake Ketchum, right? J- Jack Ketchum, yep. Jack Ketchum, there you go. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll be reading it, so if you want to read along. Mm-hmm. I liked it. It's fucking brutal, man. Mm-hmm. How brutal. Very brutal. Nice. Some brutal shit that like some of the most brutal shit I've seen or read in a while. So awesome. Is yeah. it Hill is it would you say it's like Hills Have Eyes esque? Because I heard a lot of comparisons. Yeah, on my uh Goodreads review I put Hills of Eyes meets Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Awesome. Yeah. Nice. I'm excited. It's fucking yeah, it's <laughs> fucked up. Yeah. And it's a quick read too, right? It's not that long. Uh yeah, a little bit over two hundred pages yeah. or somewhere in that realm. Yeah. All right, trivia. Yes. Whip them out. Whip them out. Let me get the scores ready here. I think I'm in the lead. You are in the lead. All right, Joe. You know you're in the lead, Joe. (laughs) He thinks. I think I'm in the lead. (laughs) Joe leading the pack with 55. I'm falling behind at 53. Second place, Steve, 53rd. Sam, respectable, 35. Holding up the rear, the badonk. Let's get some questions out. (laughs) All righty. Well, I'll start us off. Because in honor of okay, Army of the Dead, Ooh. a Zack Snyder zombie movie, I'm doing all zombie-themed trivia tonight, folks. Ooh, oh, you're yeah. Steve. So you two talked about it. I know. I got to – hold on. Let me refresh my memory of every zombie yeah, movie. Let me download some. <laughs> so this is right up Steve and Todd's alley. <laughs> yeah. So put on those brain caps. Cut open your skulls. Brain. Put on them thinking yes. caps. Mm-hmm. Okay. So – First question, what was what film first introduced the concept of zombies eating brains? Ooh. Um, I guess I'll just go Return of the Living Dead because I don't think that's the right answer, but let's go to You are correct, Todd. Oh, really? It is Return nice. of the Living Dead. Uh, it was known, Yay. of course, for introducing 
the popular concept of zombies <laughs> eating braids as opposed to just eating human flesh. Flesh. I thought it would have been way earlier than that. Me too. I was thinking I, I was white thinking zombie. Like, yeah, I was thinking like 50s. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sometimes the most obvious answer is the right answer. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, I shall go then. Thank you, Kayla. I actually missed these last week, so I appreciate <laughs> you sending them. And I apologize to her, so thank you. Um, all right, Stephen King once said, which of his novels was the only one that really scared him? Cujo? Cujo's on the board. Pet Cemetery. Pet Cemetery's on the board. Sam's really in deep thought here. Yeah. See it. She's digging Kinda deep. Lo looks like she's taking a dump on us. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't see I have the screen minimized, damn it. <laughs> um, uh, I feel like I know it, but I can't think of it, so I'm going to go with Misery. Joe with the correct answer. Oh. Pet Woo! Cemetery. All right. I actually thought Misery is actually a good answer because it is that, a good that one. Yeah. Happen to him, so right? close to home. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Misery's so good. That's my. I think that's my favorite King book. I I I remember reading about Pet Cemetery because of like the child dying, and he thought of like his children. <sighs> that's yeah. rough. Mm -hmm. All righty. Shout out to a horror fan Ryan. All right. For sending Ryan. me this trivia question. All righty. What is considered? The first zombie movie in what year did it come out? White, White zombie. zombie, 1932. That's because Joe had it as his question. I did. did really? I did. It was my next trivia question. <laughs> you used a little fucking rat. <laughs> All right. Man, I should have waited because then I could have said it and right. gotten a point. Exactly. You, guys, you guys knew what questions you had? No. This it all I, comes I, out. I literally had this as my next question. No, this was my next question. Uh, so now I'm going to have to come up with another question, honestly. Okay. So. Okay. <laughs> All right, so all my trivia questions this week are about something I'm very excited about. Tomorrow, uh, the day we're recording this, I'm interviewing Ken Sagos, who played Kincaid in The Nightmare Ooh. on Elm Street uh, 3 and 4. Nice. And he's my favorite non-Freddy character in that series. So I'm super excited Are you excited nervous? Uh, I would be, but I already spoke to him on the phone for oh, a, little, nice. a little bit. Oh, so that's awesome. That, that kind of like calmed my nerves a little bit. And he's a super fucking nice guy. Cool. So all my trivia is Kincaid related. Oh, boy. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I'm not going to know anything. Someone buzz. That was me. <laughs> I love All right. it. All right. What is the name of Kincaid's dog in Nightmare on Elm Street 4? Buddy. <sighs> great, great guess. Freddy. <laughs> uh, spark sparkles. No, I'll give you one hint. It's uh, a human name. Craven. No. Wes. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sam. Um. Willie. No. So the answer was Jason. Oh, ah. duh. <laughs> of course, it'd be cute. <laughs> yeah, something cute like that. Like Jason Voorhees. That's right. All right. Okay, we're gonna need the closest answer here. She didn't specify if going going over is allowed, so we'll allow it. Okay. It took approximately how many syringes to complete the needle pit in Saw 2? Hmm. Uh, 250. 250,000 or 250 even? 250 even. Okay. Can what you repeat yours? the question, Todd? Uh, in Saw 2, needle pit, how many needles did it take to fill that pit up? You can go over. Ooh. So we got 250 on the board. I don't know. What did you say, Joe? I said 1,000, but it's probably way more. 1,000, okay. Yeah. Okay. How many syringes? Correct. In the needle pit. And I feel like in the needle pit, it's probably like a 3cc syringe. Um, <laughs> it's like 15 feet in diameter. So um, I'm going to go 3,000. Sam, closest, it's 120,000. Wow, oh, that's crazy. That's yeah. insane. I thought that's it would be nuts. movie magic. Like, they only put <laughs> yeah. a few and uh, Yeah, the rest are cardboard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow. All right. My turn. Back yep. to me. Yep, All yep, right. Yep. Zombies. Okay. Uh, where did George Romero's Night of the Living Dead take place? Pittsburgh. But, yeah. Correct. Nice one. Good job. Where was it, Steve? Pittsburgh? Pittsburgh, yeah. 
where was it filmed at steve <laughs> the cemetery where steve what city oh man uh i should know Ev this evan city Evans city which we're gonna go visit that's right <laughs> all right todd oh no it's not my turn it's no? sam's turn oh it's my turn Okay. Um, She's thinking. <laughs> she is. <laughs> I am thinking. Don't be looking at something we're joking. See your eyes. We're in different rooms. We're different rooms. Yeah. Different rooms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know anymore. It's Joe's it's buzzing. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was one I was just going to read. Um, okay. All righty. Where did it go? <laughs> okay. Dave Batista turned down what 2021 film in order to work on this film? Uh, Fast and Furious. Great. All right, Fast and Furious on the board? Uh, no, it was uh, Suicide Squad. Uh, damn, um, Steve said no, he, Todd. He, he turned down. He said, Get he turned out of here. Yeah, he turned down Fast and Furious to do uh, Gears of War. Uh, that was a mistake. Yeah, Gears no, of War never Gears got made. So. <laughs> Do you think this was a mistake for him to be in this one and not Suicide Squad? Uh, Probably. Suicide Squad, I think, I think he, he would have blended been lost, in. He would have been lost in the shuffle of all the big mm, stars yep. in it. Okay. I agree. So good job, Dave. Mm -hmm. All right. It's tough to all turn right. down his comic book, though, movies. Yeah, for sure. Uh, he turned down the Suicide Squad, the first one or the newest one coming the out? Newest one. The newest, newest one. Because it's James Gunn. The new one, newest his, one looks pretty freaking his, cool. His buddy. Yeah, it does. All right. What are Kincaid's last words? Oh, fuck. That sounds right. <laughs> oh, he, uh, stab me. No, he uh, actually says a sentence. Oh, okay. That's a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> fuck. <Yeah. laughs> fuck. I'm not afraid of you, Freddy. Fuck you, Freddy. No, you guys, bitch asshole, Freddy. You guys want one more guess? <laughs> <laughs> sounds like he's taking a shit. <laughs> <laughs> Take a shit, Jason. He's talking to his dog. <laughs> yeah, I'll take a hint. No, no, I didn't say a hint. I said another oh. guess. It's too oh, okay. No, I don't have. No, I don't have a guess. Uh, I haven't seen part four in quite a long time. You fucking, um, you're I'm my dreaming. dream now. I'm dreaming. All right, no. Are you gonna talk about part four next week or something? Because. Um, well, I, I want to do three and four as a review. Oh yeah, okay, we're gonna cover them both. Okay, because I don't think I can see Quiet Place two because I don't think it's coming out of VOD. Ah, oh, you Canadians, Steve, <laughs> fucking Steve, pesky Canadians. You know what? We'll, we'll wait till give it hits me, VOD. Give me your prime minister's email right now. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. I'm so so it's not like oh, Freddie. Uh. I'm so excited for a Quiet Place two. Yeah, me too. Good. So, uh, but, so what Kincaid says is. Fuck. I'll see you in hell. That's what That's I said. Right. And then Damn. Freddy replies, tell him I sent you. <laughs> yeah. Nice. That's hardcore. <laughs> I'm looking forward to watching three or four. It's be cool. Me too. Me too. Yeah, I watched them last night and uh, yeah, it's so that that's that's next episode is three and four then for sure yeah i, I think so and Un unless somehow they change their mind and put it out okay. pod i think it'll be three and four and we'll have the ken sago's interview attached to it so nice 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 i need to dust off the old blu-ray mm -hmm. mm -hmm. all right one last round let's go Oop, let me uh pull up kayla again uh my phone's not unlocking <laughs> okay uh, all right tagline 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 welcome to the witching hour oh i'm scared season of the witch season on the witch or of the witch is on the board of the witch welcome to the witching hour the witching hour. what did steve say season, season. Of the witch. halloween three no. sam dig deep i, I channel my thoughts to you. i'm going to say lords of salem okay lords of salem Demons masturbating scene. Say it again, Todd. <laughs> Welcome to the witching hour. Oh, God. The witching hour is like 3 a.m., right? I don't know. I think it is. Four. Here's a hint. Four good looking ladies. The craft? It's not the craft. It's, it's the craft. Steve got it. All right. Yeah. What? Four good looking ladies. That's the tagline? I, yeah. Chaos. No, we've asked this before. That's not the tagline. <laughs> There's multiple you know, taglines sometimes. So let's see. Oh, Kayla, sure, Steve. Did when it works out <laughs> yeah, for when it worked for me, of course there is. <laughs> Steve's the like, There's multiple ones. Poster. 
Let's look at the craft poster here. Well, if you just go on IMDb, it, it'll no, no, I'm not going to do that. There yeah. are multiple tabs. Yeah, it says, welcome to the witching hour on the poster. All right. What? <laughs> How dare you question Kayla? All righty. Okay. I wasn't questioning Kayla, okay? <laughs> She's questioning you, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> you said it wrong. All right, my last one. What alcohol would you use to mix a zombie cocktail? Is it, it better trivia question, Joe? What the what fuck do you mean? Did you just ask shit. us? What alcohol would you use to mix a zombie cocktail? I'm boycotting this episode. <laughs> Gin. Incorrect. Zombie. What'd you say? Vodka. Incorrect. Uh, tequila. Incorrect. Gosh dang it. There's only like four alcohols. <laughs> right? Uh, it's uh, rum. One oh, alcohol, Of course, please. I should yes. have known. So for anyone, if you want to watch Army of the Dead and make yourself a zombie cocktail, what you want to do is you want to mix light and dark rum and brandy in a cocktail shaker, add lime juice and grenadine, shake well and strain into a highball glass, fill with cracked ice, Fill and uh, put a, some orange juice in there and leave a little room to float some Bacardi 151 on top and garnish with cherry and orange slice. Sounds expensive. It does. Yeah. You well, I guess for my next trivia question, I'm going to ask about how to me make meatballs <laughs> since we're doing stuff like that. Hey, it's zo- I said it was zombie related. I didn't say it was. All right, Sam. Okay. Everyone's mad at me for you. Sorry, guys. <laughs> No one's mad at you, Joe. I'm just disappointed. I mean, it's like... <laughs> oh, disappointed. Okay. Um, are you ready? They can't all be winners, Todd. I'm sorry. <laughs> are you ready? Yep. Yes. Hit it. Hit it. Okay. Netflix took over the project of Army of the Dead from Warner Brothers. Filming began in summer of 2019 with a budget. Of up to how much money? Two hundred million dollars. Fifty million. Uh, can we go over, or is it closest? You, uh, yeah, you can go over. I'm gonna do closest. I'm gonna go eighty million. Okay, so what did Totter say? Two hundred. Joe said fifty. Yeah, I said eighty. And Todd said how much? Two hundred. <gasps> oh wait, what? Two hundred. <laughs> Two hundred million. Todd said 200, I said 50, and Steve said 80. Steve said 80, yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's 90 million. Oh, okay. nice. Steve with a big night. All right. Good job. Last Four question. Points. This is my easiest one, so. Sure. <laughs> Get ready. The craft. How, how do you make a salad? Kitchen <laughs> hour. <laughs> right. What, <laughs> what, what is, is Canadian Kincaid's baking? favorite food? <laughs> no. Uh, all right. <laughs> what is Kincaid's first name? Kevin. Come on, man. <laughs> Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, this is. I'm this a big be Nightmare on Elm Street guy, but you know, yeah. I, I have not watched part three or four in quite a long time. Probably when we had the Lisa Wilcox interview was the last time I watched it, which was oh, like wow. three years ago. Um, Ted. I don't know. His name is Roland Kincaid. Roland. Mm-hmm. Never would have got it. Nope. <laughs> Over three on the Kincaid's question. I'm disappointed. Yeah. Uh, Oh, wow. All right, that's the end of trivia. That's it. 57, Joe, first place, commanding first place. Steve oh. Todd tied at 54. Sam, 36. Woo woo. All right, let's see, what, let's see what happens next week, huh? Hopefully we don't have any more Kincaid questions. <laughs> no, I, I want to ask you before <laughs> you watch the films or else it would have been too easy. I'm going to have all like another specific Dream Warrior next week. So nice. get ready. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Prime time, bitch. Ooh, welcome to prime time. Welcome to prime time, bitch. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's awesome. That's part. That's part three. Yeah. Part three. Yeah. Nice. All nice. right, Army of the Dead. Zack Snyder. So in this one, you have Dave Batista, who is some kind of retired uh, superhero, badass, <laughs> little, badass, uh, working at a diner, and this rich guy Tanaka, I think. Uh, wants to get $200 million out of Las Vegas, which is now uh, walled off and run by zombies uh, before the United States government nukes nu- uh, Las Vegas and to kill all the zombies that are inside. Uh, and he tells them, you can build a crew, we'll give you $50 million. you pay him what you want, but that's your cut. So he builds a crew, puts a crew together and gives them like different amounts, <laughs> uh, depending on, I guess, what they do. 
uh, to, to go into Las Vegas and steal this money before time runs out and they nuke the city. So he gets a cast of characters together. Uh, they infiltrate their way in. And that's where they realize that not only are there zombies, but there are smart zombies. And the uh, story takes twists and turns. And uh, that's pretty much the gist of the movie. I mean, there's not, it's not a deep movie. So uh, what do you guys think? I'll start us off. Um, yeah, so, you know, I watched... We did the trailer for this. We talked about it. Um, after the trailer, like my expectations weren't like high. I, you know, I was like, eh, you know, it's all right. But I mean, obviously, Zack Snyder did Dawn of the Dead, one of the, you know the greatest zombie movies, like or re- more recent zombie movies ever made. Um, so I was, you know, that definitely brought my expectations up a little bit. Um, and overall. I enjoyed this one. Uh, you know, I, I had definitely had some issues with it for sure. But like at the end of the day, like to me, I kind of took it as like a popcorn flick. It's a good like turn off your brain, just like enjoy it for what it is type movie. Uh, I, I felt like sort of like I did about God when we watched Godzilla that like the zombie stuff, like monster stuff in Godzilla, the monster stuff was great. The human stuff, not so great. I kind of felt the same about this. Like the zombie stuff was awesome in this, but like all of the human stuff, like it was like, so like cliche, like all the stuff that happened with the humans, like, which, you know, we can get into deeper as we go. Um, but you know, the zombie stuff made up for all that. I loved the setting of Las Vegas. I thought that was like, just great for, uh, this type of movie and yeah, great kills. And, you know, the smart zombie stuff was, you know, we'll get into it. I, you know, I was a little 50, 50 on that part, but, uh, yeah, overall a a fun time. Okay. So where do I start? Okay. So with this movie, after seeing the trailer, I was like, okay, I guess, whatever. I was like, yeah, I'll probably watch it. And then the guys wanted to review it on the podcast. And I said, why do I have to watch this movie? I do not want to watch it. Those dirty guys, man. Not by choice. And then when Joe said it's two hours and 30 minutes, I, I jumped out the window. He died, um, died, a, died a little inside. I died sure. a little inside. <laughs> uh, Joe didn't take me to the theater to see it or buy me nachos. I bought dinner as we watched it, but that's fine. Um, <laughs> okay, so like Joe said, it's a good popcorn flick. I loved all of the zombies. I loved the queen zombie. I feel like it was really stupid of them to... I don't know. Can I spoil it or no? Well, yeah, it's cute. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. okay, spoiler it, it, For people that haven't listened, don't listen to this if you haven't watched it yet. There you I'll just Okay, I'll just say they could have used her a lot more, but I'm sure you guys all know what that means. <laughs> she was so fucking cool. Like, why did she have to die so early on? It was like before the middle portion of the movie. Um, her and the king, I thought looked great. I loved all of the sound effects that they used for them. It wasn't cheesy or anything like that. I agree with Joe with like the human stuff was not as entertaining as the zombie stuff, which is obvious. And it's a given, I feel like, um, it was cool seeing all the Vegas stuff. And, um, okay. So I was also concerned about David Batista because I don't know much about him. I think he was in what was the Uber movie he was Stuber. just Stuber. Stuber. Okay, that's all I knew him from, but I think he's a, re- a ex-wrestler. Yes. Okay, so I really liked him in this movie. I was like, okay, I'm a I'm a Batista babe. That's that's what they're right. called. No, I don't know. I just made that up. I like up. it. That he starts a fan club. <laughs> Make some shirts. Um, but yeah, I felt like I I felt like I kind of like gave him shit for no reason. But he did really good in this movie. And it was entertaining to watch. I don't think it needed to be two hours and 30 minutes. But what do I know? Oh, uh, those tricks, tricky boys got you to watch it. Mission <laughs> accomplished. Um, yeah, there's no secret that I'm a huge zombie fan. I love Zack Snyder's Down the Dead. Um, and I, you know, I wanted this to be kind of a sequel to it. And, um, unfortunately it wasn't, you, know, you can tell by the trailer, it wasn't going to be, but, you know, still holding out hope. Um, I, you know, at the end of the day, I, I kind of want to break it down sooner than later. So I liked it overall, enjoyed it a lot. It's my top 10. Um, but I do have some main issues, like some major issues with it. 
but the stuff I really liked um, outshines that, so it, it hit for me mostly. And we can talk about my gripes after after Steve goes. Yeah, and I'm the same way. I, I actually really liked it. Uh, I thought it was a really fun movie. Uh, I'd even say I think I'd watch it again this year. Like, I liked it enough to uh, rewatch it with kind of a more... I don't know, just to watch it and be, pay more attention to certain things because there's a lot going on. Uh, I do have some pretty major issues with it, but none of those major issues put it in a way that I didn't like the movie. You know, it's just, it's me overthinking things and maybe having expectations for certain things that I'll talk about that if I didn't put those expectations on the movie, which isn't really fair to put expectations on the movie, that maybe it would have hit more, but... Uh, it's just a lot of like these little gripes that I have, which I will talk about. But overall, I thought it was a fun ride. I actually liked the characters. I think it was Sam that says you, or Joe, one of you two say you didn't really like the characters. Uh, whereas I did. Uh, I liked Dieter, the German guy. I thought he was goofy. Uh, I liked Dave Batista. Uh, I like uh, Tignataro's, um, the pilot. I thought she was good, great. Uh, and there's a whole thing about her, which is, her. Yeah. oh yeah, that's a whole fucking thing that I didn't even notice. I didn't even know about that until after I saw the movie and that blew my mind. So we'll talk about that soon. But yeah, overall, I really dug it. I, I thought it was a really fun film and it's actually sitting in my top three right now of the year. Like I, I just had a really good time with it. Yeah. Yeah. It's my number one so far this year. Uh, admittedly though, that I think, I still think the year is super weak though. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, so yeah. I, I don't, I don't think this will remain at the top in my number one spot right um but like I think, yeah it, i think it's, it's the best like major release so far for yeah sure. i agree yeah. um you know I, I i've been wanting to talk about this like i felt the better movie all around would have been the title credits at the beginning like mm. I, I love the the thought of like a mercenary group going to vegas and like getting families out and rescuing people like that was awesome all that stuff I love the build out. I love the last stand shot of people on a car and the carpet bombing coming in and him like screaming as the, the con container drops on that family. Like that's the movie I, I, I was hoping to see. And I feel like this one is more of a sequel, you know, to to already established universe. Like, yeah, I, I don't understand why they let off with this one. You might same get that way. one. I actually. feel the same way too, Todd. I was oh. telling Joe, like, I wish we would have seen the first person that that group of zombies attacked right when they got in Vegas. Like I wanted to see all that action yeah. and it was just like, kind of like throwing photos, like here's what's happened so far so you can catch up. Okay, let's go. Mm -hmm. Which is like all the stuff were super interesting mm -hmm. before that happened. I was like, man, I really want this. Cause that movie seems more of a Dawn of the Dead sequel or prequel or, or same universe at least. Cause this is obviously like a different realm, but um, yeah, I really want to see that part. And like, I'm with, with you guys too saying like the care I, I like the characters themselves yeah like i thought they were all cool like they all had their individual individuality um but like the the daughter batista Ugh. relationship was shoehorned mm -hmm. in there yeah big time no emotional connection to any of them like her mm -hmm. her whole side plot could have been removed completely yeah or or make or establish it sooner like maybe have a scene where he's talking to his love interest, which was also shoehorned in mm -hmm. literally uh, 30 seconds before she dies. I yeah. love you. You did blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And then she gets her head snapped. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. that's why I think like that first opening credits could have been that it could have been the relationship, how that fell apart. Right. And then you have the love interest, why that didn't work out. And then the sequel, it makes more sense for the daughter to try to interject herself into like that group. And she's a volunteer and which I, fucking theo rossi can suck it because he's so annoying in that movie he's supposed to be though right? i know he is but he is. Uh, take the, shave the stash first of all <laughs> and secondly like he's belittling her because she's a volunteer for like refugees essentially like come on man yeah yeah i mean that was like my that was a major gripe of mine todd was that that like whole side story with the daughter like going in to save uh these like who even How? are these women like they're, they're two women i think yes there's like three yeah but who like who like who are they exactly just like, refugees. Just yeah refugees. that she helped yeah. okay. take care of like one of the woman's kids and then she volunteers herself and it's like well you're the caretaker now of that, the that's kids. what i was thinking you're like, mad yeah. that the mom yeah. went and now you want to go like no one's gonna take care of the kids if you're gone right but and that's like the thing though we're not really introduced to these refugees really per, like a lot so like it's like who cares about them and then so, the like, ending, they don't even show them right and they and then they and guess and then spoiler alert, they fucking die so like okay so so it was all for nothing really anyway but um like it was just like so pointless like okay in a two and a half hour movie 
you could have cut like that whole half hour side plot and it would not have made one like a difference in this movie. So that, that was definitely a, a major gripe of mine. And then, like, and then like, you're talking about like all of these, like the love interest and, you know, like the relationship with his daughter, it was just like cliche after cliche for me. Like, it was like, okay. Like I, like I was like, I could predict exactly what was coming next. I was like, oh, okay, this is going to happen. Then this is going to happen. And this is going to happen. But, and like, I mean, yeah, like maybe like nitpicking a little bit because it was still like fun, but like those are definitely like the two big major gripes I had. Yeah, and you got to like really turn off your brain too. And I know it's a zombie action movie, but with this, it's like they make the stakes super high and dangerous, but then she's able to just sneak off and like find the find them and then really like Mm – didn't it, yeah like after all this struggle like with these trained killers having issues this girl is just able to walk around downtown vegas and <laughs> sneak yeah. into a zombie stronghold well and going back to like her side story i just wasn't attached to her and i didn't care about like her and her father at the end i was more worried about the other characters in the crew mm-hmm. um if they were going to survive or when they were coming up to trouble i was more concerned and felt bad for them than i did the daughter yeah like i felt more bad when uh the german dude dies than like when you don't you even know, know if he does, does he, he though does off does he? we don't know we don't i guess yeah <laughs> it is right maybe we'll see him in the sequel i guess but yeah. <laughs> did, did anyone else think that the side characters didn't have closure at all except for a couple like diedrich dies off screen allegedly um the black dude never uses his fucking his weapon that they were uh, pumping that's, up that, that, that's oh, in my yeah. notes the that big is song. Huge, yeah. yeah that's gonna be awesome to see zombies get killed with never and, used like, it <laughs> but let's they use literally it had cut it. wire the whole yeah, fucking they film. had it in the movie because they knew they had to fucking get out of that guy that that closed the hatch on him mm-hmm. and that guy going toe-to-toe with the alpha super badass scene but then it's like he gets mm-hmm. his ass kicked i'm like <laughs> i don't know man it's just like I didn't have a lot of closure on a lot of the characters. The pilot, she crashes, and that's the end of her. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She was cool. Uh, yeah. There, so th- that's one of my issues. Is if I start nitpicking stuff uh, that I have, I had expectations for, or that they didn't get closure on. So we get robot zombies. Cool. Do we? Um, See, yeah, we do. that's what I said. The, the ones with glowing yeah. eyes when they shoot yes. them are robots. It's confirmed. And that's. I was thinking, oh, that's cool. I wonder what what the deal is with that. You never find Wait, out. Wait, like, yeah, like. I think maybe that's part of the ones that were in that cart that gets knocked over at the beginning of the movie. Did I miss that? Like, that I missed the these robot the zombies. Was yeah, it like kind of a. Oh, you think it was? Okay. Did no, they it, was, get, like, it was confirmed by Snyder that they're robots, yeah. but they're going to okay. be in, in, in the continuation. Yeah, you can, you can see that they're robots because when he shoots their faces off, you could see the. Sam said something and I didn't There's like, like blue yeah. in them okay. and blue, their eyes are like I thought robot that was, eyes. Yeah. I just thought it was, that was like a stylistic, like Zack Snyder no, choice. No, but, no, those oh, are it, straight up robots. Interesting. Actually, um, I don't like that. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. make any sense to me at all. <laughs> and, then, and then, like, similar to the big saw, as soon as they walk into Vegas, right, into the, like, the main area, they see these dried up zombies. They're like, oh, you should see what happens with them when, when they rain. I'm like, oh, cool. I can't wait to see that. Nope. <laughs> You're not going to see that dude in this film. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, that, oh, it's just, yeah. like, little things like that or overthinking it. Um, so their plan is to have, what, 12 people <laughs> with $200 million on one <laughs> helicopter? Solid really? plan. That was a small <laughs> helicopter. Plan. Yeah, that was yeah. a small helicopter too. And I was like, man, and like, think about how much two hundred million dollars weighs. I was like, how the fuck are they carrying all that? Yeah, but yeah, never, they had like meant- nine minutes or twenty minutes to pack away all that money. And Joe's like, that's gonna take a long time. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was never the plan though, really, right? He just wanted a zombie yeah. head, which mm-hmm. is dumb too. Why do you have to? Why do you have to make this whole charade or whatever, where you can literally just pay the coyote, which is what he did anyway? To get to the walk head. in, grab yeah. a head, walk back out. Like, eat, yeah, why, why wouldn't they just? It. You're right. It is like, cause why wouldn't he just be like, I want this zombie head, so I'm going to pay $200 million to just go. Or, I mean, right. I guess he, it was never about the money, right? He was never going to pay them anyway. So it was just a uh, way to get them but, in. But there. then when he gets the zombie head, he still goes to for the money. Yeah. So right. he, he, he could just leave. He could be like, I got my head. I'm out. <laughs> you know, nope. Yeah. He goes to the. So there, yeah, there, there's definitely some major plot holes. Uh, I also didn't understand the whole Lion King moment with the baby because that was bizarre. Like, I, I get what they were going with. It was to make 
him kind of a- angrier, but he was very angry about his wife dying or his like <laughs> girlfriend or whatever. That that was enough. I didn't need the fucking blue baby in my life. That like was a, that yeah. was weird. Yeah, I was like, why? You said a, the Lion King. Lion King moment. Moment. Oh my yeah. god, I'm dead. <laughs> That's sort of what it was. You guys didn't it's, think of that one? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I thought it was random too. And because like they're the queen and king. And it's mm-hmm. like, he's obviously going to be very upset and sad with her dying. Like, I, yeah. And then it's just like, okay, so was she pregnant before she turned into a zombie? Did they, they had sex as zombies and then now she's pregnant? Like, wouldn't the baby already be dead? Just so many questions I had about a zombie pregnancy. I mean, so, she. I would say she definitely was not pregnant beforehand because this thing seemed like it was years. like maybe months or yeah, months yeah, or years yeah. later. So she definitely was not pregnant beforehand. So apparently, zombies are having. They're smart zombies, so apparently you can have zombie babies now. They got yeah, they got blood too. flowing. Which I don't know how you feel. People, I mean, I don't know. What'd you feel about the whole like zombie hierarchy? I, I kind of like that. It's different. I didn't know? mind. Yeah, I mean, I didn't mind it. Yeah, it was it was played off. They they looked cool enough. They mm-hmm. they didn't overdo it in a way that was like crazy. No, I I kind of I, I, that's what separated this one from other zombie films. You know, we're at the point where we've seen everything. Yeah. So I thought that was a clever little thing that they played well enough. You know, yeah. other than the baby, I thought it was cool. Mm-hmm. Well, I I must have missed it. What was the purpose of them capturing humans, like the females? Were they breeding them? Oh, like you mean like in the beginning when they offered the sacrifice? No, when uh, the alpha steals the women, which the daughter goes to rescue. Like, what is the point? Uh, oh. Yeah, I, I think they just turn them. Like, yeah, and maybe to breed, yeah. like their okay. their master race. I, or I whatever thought they were using like Theo Rossi to for his semen, and then the girls for their eggs or whatever. Like, I thought they're. I thought that's what they're using for them for. I mean, quite possibly, yeah. Maybe they're just trying to build their army. Yeah, like you said. I mean, she's pregnant, right? So I guess like the other zombie women can get pregnant too. So yes. they're like sex slaves, maybe. Like just like fucked up as that is, but yeah. And they seem to only be powerful if they're bitten by the alpha, right? That that mm-hmm. was a. That's why the tiger was so powerful, and that's why the queen was so powerful. So they don't just bite them themselves. They, they actually bit a tiger. To, that's crazy. They actually have to bring him to the alpha for him to do it. And that's why yeah. I think uh, all that. Okay, and zombie, the zombie tiger was, he was the highlight of this movie. He was fucking awesome. And that fucking kill scene is was so good and so mm-hmm. brutal. It was all, yeah. <laughs> when he bites off that dude's fucking face, that yeah. was awesome. And the zombie horse was really cool too. Can we also talk about the how out of focus this movie is? Like, yeah, I was like, "What the fuck is going? Why? Why is the movie so out of focus all the time? Especially when they're outside in Vegas." And I thought at first, maybe, well, when I after I watched it, it was because they were trying to uh, cut out Chris Delia out of it, mm-hmm. and that was one of their. But it, it turns out it's actually a new Zack Snyder thing where he uses a type of camera that makes everything out of focus to give it a dream look. So I, I didn't like it at all. I, Zach, I was, I was just annoyed. Off, like it was, it was more <laughs> annoying than it was like artistic to me. He's a stop. What do you guys think? Email him, please. I yeah, I'm on that, it, Todd. That definitely did not bug me. Like I definitely noticed it, but it it didn't bother me. Yeah, it was weird, but it didn't take me out of it. It was super. It was like we don't need to do this, man. It's it's not the right movie. Like for like, like slow mo's your thing. Don't don't start adding fucking <laughs> out of focus of shots. And... Is, there was no slow mo in this at all, really. There's some, but not. There's some, yeah. You like know, all really of like... those Vegas shots at the beginning. Oh yeah, that's right. The whole fifteen minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I really like though, and maybe people don't, but I like the ninja zombie that uh, Dave Chisa tries to take out, and he's fucking oh sliding yeah. Around. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I also loved uh, how the King Zombie wore that metal faceplate to like yeah right. So he wouldn't get he couldn't get shot in the head. I thought kneecaps that, out. Damn. That was so cool. <laughs> yeah, just blow his legs off. Mm-hmm. Um, I like the helicopter coming off the fucking side of the roof and like oh, sliding yeah. downwards. That was cool. Yeah, I don't know how if that would work, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> it works in movies like this. Talk, uh, in physics, yeah. Uh, all right, you guys want to get in some some of the questions we got to because sure. uh, we do have yeah. a few of them. Yeah. So, I, I, I do want to get into the very ending too after the questions yeah, too. My least favorite questions. thing. In, my least favorite thing <laughs> in the Indiana movie, Jones Part Four moment. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right, so Galdino says the digital animation of the tiger was great. Which oh yeah, uh, yeah, totally agree. Uh, Mike says, was I the only person who thought the zombie king looked like Hero Mackie, but Mickey Rourke? 
<laughs> I didn't I didn't personally see that, but you know, hey. Yeah, I, I guess kind of, right? I, I thought <laughs> he was just like a buffed hair. up, like yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's he's cool. He's cool looking. I like the yeah, queen a lot more. I thought I love yeah. the queen's design and sounds totally right. Too, like yeah. what the fuck? Why'd they kill her so quick? She's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think uh, she should have been the leader. I, I, I think they should have killed him and then she yeah. becomes the leader. Yeah. That would have been a better yeah. like even when she came down, I was like, Oh shit, I'm afraid of her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, they nailed the design on that one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so so the next one from Mike uh, is something that we kind of glanced over. But so for those who don't know, they filmed the movie with Chris Delia. I think that's his name. Delia. Uh, Delia. Okay, so Chris Delia uh, as the person uh, who did the helicopter. So as the pilot, they filmed the whole movie that way. And then he did some bad things with kids. Uh, I don't know what it is. I didn't want to look into it, but he did some bad things. So they decided to put a lot of money into it and digitally replace him throughout the whole movie with Tig Notaro. So everything you saw with her uh, was done completely uh, digital. The actors never met her in person. Uh, and I thought they did a fucking great job of replacing, because I didn't even know that. Like when I watched the movie, that didn't register. It's after I watched it. I'm like, oh shit, that was crazy. So he asked, could anyone tell that Tig Notaro was digitally inserted into the film? That alone should get a nod for best editing. Her part was great. So what do you yeah. guys think? No, I couldn't tell. I was trying to look for it because Joe had told me that when we started the movie, uh, but I couldn't tell at all. Yeah, no, there was so only because I was looking for it because I knew like before I watched the movie, there was like one little scene where like I kind of noticed it. But like besides that, you would Are have you sure no... that wasn't the blur of the camera. It very well could have been well those two. <laughs> it very well could have been that as well. But yeah, no, I. I just that I that it blew blows my mind that mm -hmm. they're able to do something like that because like you would have no idea. Yeah, I thought she was great too. Yeah, she was good. I, I don't oh, even yeah. want to see the other version. I thought she was excellent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I saw like photos of like him on set, and I'm like, oh, how weird. Like, but I would I would be interested to see that version. But you know, like it's not. We, we never. It'll never, yeah. it'll never come out. No, yeah, he's, no. no. He's I actually. Snyder said someone asked him is there going to be a Snyder cut of Army of the Dead mm -hmm. he said Netflix are so cool with directors and their visions that you're watching the Snyder cut like, okay oh. they, they didn't talk around awesome. so. I would have thought that there was uh, stuff left out just because kind of some of the potholes no well he he so he's planning a sequel and a prequel um so oh. I guess we'll see what happens I with want that, that prequel with Vegas man yeah, yeah. so much potential. Why? Like, why not just start at the prequel? Cool? Like, <laughs> what the heck? Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. So, next question is from Weezerface Are the monsters in this movie really zombies or just infected? I I'd say uh, zombies. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, zombie ish. Zombies are infected. It's the same thing, people. I mean, because they, they die. They like die. Educate right? me on the on. zombie wait, life. Wait. We don't we don't know what they are, right? Because it was never right. You know, you don't it was know. It's a military for sure. experiment, probably. Right. Oh, I think I read it's aliens too. I don't know. There's a bunch of shit out there. That that's coming in the next question. Oh. Okay. Uh, but yeah, no, I I think there's zombies in this one. Oh, you know, uh, you know, guys, we didn't touch upon. Remember when they're outside the um, the gate, and the black gentleman was like, "This is us in a different timeline." We keep repeating this same thing. Yeah. Right. Do you guys awesome. think there's any truth to that? There has to be. He didn't throw that in for fun. I don't think. Yeah. Uh, there's oh, got to be so something that thinking? they'll play with in the future. So you think they're in like a simulation? Or well, that something? would explain the robots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would explain yeah. the robots. It, why it would. Different types of zombies. Ooh, I there's... like that. Maybe the whole it world's would. infected and they're like got some kind of weird so, game. I don't and, know. and how do you bring the cast back for a sequel? Is this like a ghost? True. Is this like a Ghost of Wars scenario like we saw earlier in the year? Yeah, when I don't know. In... <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah it's, I think I don't think he just threw that for fun. Yeah, and you wouldn't just throw the robot zombies in there, no, right? It yeah. doesn't make any sense. I'll, there, something's coming. Yeah. yeah him and the. I'm scared. I, <laughs> I don't like calling him the black gentleman. Do you guys know his name? Because he's one of my favorite characters in it. So... Um. Army. It's uh Van der Roche. Okay. And well, that's that doesn't roll Van... off the tongue at all. <laughs> yeah, Omari Cardway, because I remember uh, yeah. the Batista talking about them having a weightlifting competitions on set. That's to some be family shit right there. Who's the buffest? Yeah. Uh, so Vander Mosh and <laughs> the German guy, I love their relationship. That was one of my favorite parts of the movie because he kind of took him under his wing because he's like the weaker the the dudes and he's he protects them. It, it was sweet. 
And then uh, I just like their whole thing. So that was cool. One more of that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, all right. So next uh, questions come for us from Amando, which is our buddy on the Let's XP Gaming podcast. Uh, those were UFOs early on in the movie, right? Following the convoy just as they were leaving. Are these zombies alien hybrids? I must have missed the UFOs. I didn't see them. That was at the I'm... very beginning. Yeah, at the very beginning. Yeah. I missed them as well, but I saw in the trivia um, on the IMDb that they showed two UFOs. Huh. So interesting. Well, they did take them from uh, Area 51, right? That's what we were supposed yeah. to Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's probably some weird shit, man. This it's is gotta... exciting. This makes Why me... couldn't they start it off with the prequel? I know. It's like it could have really like had a good bang to it, you know? It was done on purpose so that you want the prequel. Maybe. Because if they started right away with alien zombie, people would be like, oh. It just goes yeah, down. I don't know how <laughs> yeah. I feel. Yeah, yeah. So maybe this will go, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so I guess we'll see it. with the prequel or sequel. Uh, he also asks, what was the most brutal kill? The tiger. The tiger death. That was, I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you wanted him to like keep dragging that guy around so i rapper. did <laughs> yeah uh i like the 50 cal and the credits where she's just blowing that zombie from like oh, the that top was cool. down yeah, yeah that, that was, was awesome cool. mm-hmm. yeah yeah I, I i would agree with the the tiger i think that was the best one that easily could have been like super lame too if right yeah, yeah if it wasn't done properly for sure mm-hmm. um and he says i missed diet <laughs> dieter already <laughs> But he's not dead. I am telling you, he's right, not dead. We'll if he didn't, he's the only one you didn't actually see. Well, he's one of the only ones you actually didn't see die or dead. Okay. So there's something to that. Maybe All they're right. robots too. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Um, okay. So this one from Rinfa. Which zombie movie do you think perfectly depicts zombies? I missed that before, I guess. Mm, probably like any of the Romero zombie movies, like Night and Dawn. Other okay. the night remake, I'd I'd say I, I'd say yeah. the same. Night remake okay. was like the perfect like song. They were dead. They were they, they, you could see how they died. You know, like the way that they mm. designed them. You you could see a lot of them had um their stitches from their autopsy. Uh, if they had come mm-hmm. from you know, there's just yeah. I think it's that's probably the premiere zombies although walking dead does it really well because the further we're getting into the series the more decrepit the zombies are and i love it when the zombies are in a swamp or they were burnt and they all reflect that and it's i think that's super fucking awesome i think the work they do on the zombies in the walking dead like if you're gonna not like the walking dead the one thing you have to respect is the zombie designs Uh, greg nicotero does a fucking fantastic job of it Mm -hmm. um all right and the last question we have is from horror fan ryan would this movie had been better received 10 years ago feels like we've seen this movie a dozen times now Uh, kind of would make me think of terminator so i don't really know like if he made this before dawn of the dead i guess like almost 2004 that's 17 years ago yeah yeah right um i don't know like i is this movie getting poorly received like i've seen I, i see it all it's i fixed. see like ones i see five i, I like it's all it's over all the over yeah has um, a six out of ten that's pretty high for a horror movie on imdb mm-hmm. it is yeah i think mainstream audiences are like and i think most of the bad stuff is coming from horror people yeah i mean there's definitely like like i said it, it's there's like a lot of cliches here so i could see why people aren't loving this and like obviously the the smart zombie stuff i could see like people not liking that too um would it have been better perceived 10 years ago? I mean, maybe, but I, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's it's. I, I know you said, like, we've seen this movie before, but we kind of haven't with, like, this version of Zombies, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm still kind of upset that he never made the Dawn sequel that he promised for years because that mm-hmm. was, like, in the pipeline. They had a really cool deleted scene at the end, of, or end credit scene at Dawn of the Dead where they all die, which is an awesome scene. But that never happened. That movie made so much money. I can't believe why they didn't green light that. But do you think this movie's in the same universe? No. 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 Okay. No. I heard. So- I saw someone ask that. But... Because the zombies aren't like that fast, right? It's it's the the yeah. like the super zombie guys that are. This is like more of like Land of the Dead zombies, where you get like a, the smart ones. Yeah. But they couldn't become <laughs> faster if it was the same universe. 
Like, because it, not now at the time, like because it happens right, like in Dawn of the Dead, they're fast yeah. immediately. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, I see what so, you're saying. Yeah. No, I think this is just totally separate. It's right. a I... new uh, zombie universe, though. He's gonna make a mm-hmm. whatever yeah. you call it, Snyderverse. Snyder, yeah, he's, yeah. he's just, he, he wants that Snyderverse. Like he just wants it. Yeah. someone just let him do it already. Like yeah, fuck seriously. It. I think he will. I, I mean, this movie, I think, is doing pretty well. Like, and it's number one right now on Netflix. So right. I, I'm sure it's you know. So. A lot of people are talking about. It. Like a lot of people have seen it. You know, like yeah, there's... totally. I've seen yeah. that's like fucking every horror forum I'm in. There's like a million posts about this movie. So, yeah. uh, can we talk about the very ending though before we rate it? Yeah. Talk yeah. about him surviving a nuclear blast. Okay. That's what I was gonna say. I was like, <laughs> okay, listen. I after watching Chernobyl, I was like, oh. there's no. He, if he him getting walking out of that fucking new blast, like he, he would have melted. Like, you know what? Indiana Jones did it inside a fridge. All right. Okay. In, the, in the fifties. So. I mean, <laughs> he, he was in a bank vault, I guess, but still, that radiation, like the fucking nuke, just happened. Like it just he would have stayed out. Crisp. He would have had to stay down there for like months. Like yeah. which I guess we don't know for sure. Maybe he was down there for months, but well, he would have fucking would, died of dehydration. What would, have, what would he have eaten or drank? But, yeah, but, but exactly. you're you're also assuming. Yeah that it's a nuclear bomb as we know them exactly you know? that's what i'm saying if this is a government that can build robot zombies <laughs> then maybe they have a nuke that just is just like basically a napalm nuke it's just fire and then that's it well did the government build their robot zombies or did they just bite robots we don't that know. was <laughs> around vegas <laughs> they turned into zombies yeah they went to like disney world and bit the animatronics and that's yeah. what no, they went to willie's wonderland and got them <laughs> yeah <That's right. laughs> Uh, okay, but then all right, so then he ends up on a fucking plane, and we find out he's bit, and I guess yeah. that's setting us up for the sequel. I guess yeah, in Mexico. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So a lot of issues here. One, he walks home, just <laughs> fucking just walks home, and through that whole what else walk, is he, supposed to he do? never saw that he was bit. So and I never said like, oh my fucking adrenaline. Arm. Yeah. Yeah, but that's a or long time the for bolt. adrenaline to wear off, he, you know? He couldn't feel it from all the, the radiation yeah, going so, through his body. And the biting, too, because a lot of them turned so f- not fast, but yeah, faster than quicker like, than a walk <laughs> yeah. home. Now, see, what I thought he was doing and what I was hoping he was doing is he was going to go til- kill Tanaka, like, out of just mm-hmm. rage. That's and, what I thought. But did it, like, super, like, fancily, like, on his way. like With this, his saw, maybe? But, oh, yeah. Like, just, you know, like, he, he, he buys the plane. He, like, has drinks on the plane. Like, he does it, like, in a way that's almost like a big fuck you, you know? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. no. It was, that was the stupidest ending. It was horrible. Like, I thought that. Yeah, it was, was just, like. It was a I, terrible ending. Yeah. Just ended at Bautista dying. Yeah, like, because even and then. her getting saved. Like, like you said, the whole point of the fucking daughter, which I hated, worst character in the movie, was to save that girl. And she, what, dies on the helicopter? They never show her or mention her again? It's just like, eh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So now the kids are taken by the military to some foster thing. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I didn't like the end of it. That was my big, like, actual gripe. Is yeah, I hated. Well, the you, end. you could tell it was just kind of thrown in too, because like yeah. it was like Sequel. it was. It almost felt like a post-credit scene. You know, and I was really hoping mm-hmm. that they left Batista on the roof, and he became the new <laughs> Alpha for the new one. Oh, like, that'd be interesting. I, yeah. I thought that would have been super cool. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. 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 Right. If you're well, if you're gonna make it, if you're gonna save them, at least give him his fucking sandwich shop or whatever. You want <laughs> to build. I think it's a crab sandwich or whatever it was. It's, lobster rolls was lobster it? rolls yeah or what do you say like craft macaroni or no craft grilled yeah, or, cheese sandwiches or, or tofu a tofu restaurant you also yeah. talked about yeah all right uh rate this fucking thing all righty uh yeah so we touched on everything it, it, like it, fun popcorn movie has issues though i'm gonna go sitting in my top 10 though like it, it's a good solid flick uh i'm gonna go seven and a half Okay. Sammy? Um, I'm going to go seven. Ooh. I think. I forgot what I rated it, so I'm going to pull up my You put master four, sheet four out of five. Uh, four out of five. Stars. Uh, so four out of five letterbox, I guess mm, let's go eight and a quarter out of ten. Pretty high. Yeah. Number one, baby. All right. And that's exactly what I gave it, 8.25. 
I, I, you know, despite the uh, obviously a big amount of issues, I really had fun watching this, and I see myself watching this again. And that's a big, like, for a two and a half hour movie. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's, it didn't that's feel like it to me. Compliment. It I, didn't. Yeah, I, I actually agree. Like it, it moved. Like there was never really a dull moment. Like it, it did keep moving, like at a good pace, even though it definitely could have been trimmed down. Uh, it never, you never really felt that two and a half. Yeah. 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 So, horror squad approved. Squad approved. Yeah. Army of the Dead. Yes. Zack Snyder. Back to a classic. Back to a classic next week. Yeah, two. Two classic. Elm Street 3 and 4. Yes. uh, With an interview with Ken Sagos, Kincaid. Super excited about it. His first name is what again? Is Roland Kincaid. Roland Kincaid. (laughs) Got it. All right, Roland. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. And we get Spiral eventually. Don't worry, folks. We will eventually. be doing Spiral and Quiet Place, Quiet Place eventually. Yeah. Just gives you, you more time to, the to check it out. That? You guys going to the theater or not? I think Quiet so. Place? Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm worried that it'll yeah. get ruined. I think I'm going to stream I'm gonna stream it. At home. I think the, there's like no... When we went and saw Spiral, there was like no one in the theater. And King Kong, there was like no one in the theater. So I think we'd be safe going to see Quiet Place too. So we'll yeah, see. Spiral, Although, Spiral we'll is see. pretty full for me. Although on Saturday, they're uh, in our state, they're re- lifting all restrictions, everything like 100% capacity. Yeah, us too. So, yeah. They're, they're saying, fuck it. Steve's yeah. over here, fucking, <laughs> we got one case, shut the city down. Steve can't even go see a movie, but we're at 100% capacity now. We're, we're, we're what, riding around shooting guns in the air. <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, is why our border is closed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, we're, we're coming over, buddy. <laughs> you guys are basically the fucking Las Vegas to my Nevada. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, but exactly. They're putting containers around the border. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I want my shawarma. Let me in, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Nice. But yeah, stick yeah. around for our interview. Uh, Alex Noye, uh, Sound of Violence director. Absolutely. All right. Check it out. Bye. Uh, Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Horror Squad podcast, where today we are joined by a very special guest. He is the writer and director of The Sound of Violence, which is now available on VOD. Please welcome Alex Neuer. Alex, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you doing? Hi, guys. Thanks for having me. I'm good. All right. Awesome. Uh, so why don't you just start off by telling our listeners what The Sound of Violence is about and where you came up with the idea for it. Um, very simply, Sound of Violence is about a killer who makes music through murder. Um, that's the basic premise. That's that's literally what I, what I pitched out into the world um, when I was trying to get it greenlit. Um, it goes all the way back to uh, a documentary I made called 808, uh, that one here. Um, and, uh, and essentially, you know, that documentary I produced um, was all about the legendary TR-808 drum machine. And so for five years of my life, the, a drum machine essentially took it over. Um, we traveled the world and spoke to amazing people. Um, but at the end of it, when we, uh, we, uh, released it, um, I kind of felt that it was time for me to move on from documentaries. I had been in documentaries for over eight years, so it kind of felt that I needed something new. Uh, and my wife recommended that I delve into my first love, which are horror movies. And, um, and so next thing I know, I'm working on, on various concepts and projects, um, and all of a sudden, uh, uh, you know, I was reminiscing about uh, the old drum machine and, and a little light bulb, light bulb uh, lit up. Um, I got to kill somebody with a drum machine. <laughs> <laughs> and that, uh, that turned into Conductor. Conductor was uh, the short film that kind of introduced the world to Alexis. And uh, the character of Alexis seemed to uh, raise many questions and interest uh, as we toured festivals. And, uh, and yeah, I, it was not intended to become a feature, but uh, but the feedback we were getting was, you know, there was a lot of interest in this sort of paradigm shift of music and and terror, and um, and then the character of Alexis seemed quite peculiar. So I dove straight in and wrote uh, her backstory and then her journey onwards. Yeah, I guess I mean we we watched it and it's good. It's like probably one of the most unique and original horror movies I've seen in a long time. So uh, props to you for that big time. Uh, now Thank has very much. Yeah. Uh, has, has music always been, a, you know, a passion of yours? Is that why you threw, you know, use that as your theme? It, it's interesting. Cause I mean, I've always been 
you know, well into music and really um, it's always been um, part of my life, especially sort of like music that had beats that kind of grabbed me. And that's, I had a quite eclectic taste, but, you know, beats tended to be the, the sort of commonality between um, the various loves I had. Um, but, you know, I'm also the son of an artist, uh, a painter, um, and even my documentary career started around uh, contemporary art and, and the like. So actually, it's more like the journey, the artistic journey that was really a fascination of mine my whole life. Um, yeah, as I said, my father's a painter, my grandfather was a painter, my my mother was a journalist in the arts when she met my dad. I mean, you know, we were always kind of like linked to that. So, um, but but then, you know, when I created the, the, the production company, um, uh, it became, uh, I created my company in 2004 in London. And very quickly we started to get involved in music, um, you know, music videos and music content in general. We were sort of, um, we were given a chance to, to, uh, to, create a lot around music. So, you know, we started with a few documentary in the art world, as I said, we started with a conversation with Julian Schnabel, we did a, a feature about the New York art scene, but then once we had proved ourselves with that first feature, um, the next uh, light bulb I had was 808. And so then it became much more music driven. And and then, you know, in my, in my love for horror, I always loved how music plays an essential role, um, how scores, you know, resonate with people I, I was lucky enough to sit through um, um, a talk by John Carpenter, and um, and I was just like in awe of the fact that he doesn't read music, but he uses music at, instinctually. And I was just like, this is exactly why you know I was in Cannes, uh, you know, pitching uh, conductors' feature adaptation to the world, and I hear somebody who just justifies music um, as instinct, and I'm just like, this is exactly it. Um, so yeah, it's. Um, I think you know, music is a sort of. A, I, as as I said through Alexis, music is a language, and um, and I do think in horror we have an opportunity to use it uh, differently. And I wanted to to use it differently, and I wanted to use everything I knew about drum machines and every quirky bits of interest I had in music to kind of see how I can kind of shift it uh, into a new paradigm. Uh, uh that's awesome uh it's great to see like you know like just actual like horror fans you know making like genre movies like this um that this and this is also your very first feature film day uh you know this is your feature film debut um so what would you say that you learned um while making this movie and what will you take um from it while when making a future movie the number one thing I learned was definitely to switch off my producer's instinct occasionally, because I've been a producer for 17 years. And, mm -hmm. and that's always the reflex is that like, you know, um, on set, you, you kind of, you worry yourself with all the details that are going on behind. And I had an amazing line producer who, who on day two said to me, Alex, if anything goes wrong, you'll be the last one to know. And I was just like, ah, yes, that's where I, you know, but um, I also love the fact that I was, you know, I, and, and I'm not the only one saying that, but generally the director is the least qualified guy on set. He's there with a fair, with a focus on storytelling. He works, you know, more sporadically, whereas you have a lot of people around who are, who go from job to job and have this constant uh, enhancement of experience and they're real specialists and the crafts that they, and so, in the sense of, of use, making the most out of everybody's specialty is definitely something which I, again, I mean, it's always been kind of my mentality because I've been championing a lot of talent through the years uh, to my, through my, uh, my production company, but now I was at the core of it and I was relying on everybody's um, expertise. And it's wonderful because I focus on storytelling and, and performance and, you know, actors and, you know, um, and, and I can say, okay, I'd like things to be that way or that way. And then I, I don't worry myself about the, 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 the specifics of trust expertise. And, um, and, you know, it just, um, you know, if you're the, if you're there, you're, you're, you're learning by, by being surrounded by incredible people. And I can tell you that this crew um, and their dedication to this story is the reason why we could shoot this in 20 days and deliver it uh, the way we have. Wow. Uh now, I, I don't want to get too spoilery, but I do want to talk a little bit about the kills in the movie because uh, they're just like so unique. Uh, you know, did, where did the uh, inspiration for them come from? Was it from other horror movies or were they just in your own sick head? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
you know, this is actually funny because I, I think horror writers tend to be, uh, you know, the the most normal guys, and we yeah, we don't have totally. fantasy. Yeah. We don't have fantasies about violence. We actually mm-hmm. fear it more than anyone, and that's why we put it on screen that way. It's just, you know, we exhort our fears, and mm-hmm. um, and you know, I'm a father of two. I live, a, you know, I have, a, <laughs> I'm married, two daughters, uh, a dog. That's my, you know, that's my life. But um, but meanwhile, um, the reason I wanted to create that was. You know, first was the short. It was, you know, again, the idea that beats are violent and therefore let's sort of exacerbate the, the violence of the sound into uh, a terror uh, framework. And because it worked uh, with the short, I wanted to explore that more. And now also because the movie is the journey of an artist, the, the focus has to be about making music, not about killing people. And, and it's very important when you watch the movie to see that, 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 that Alexi's attention is the sound, never the victim. Um, but yeah, so the ideas came out of um, considering instruments and the way they worked as a process with terrible collateral damage. Again, the logic of, of a drum machine and beats seems quite, lo- you know, I don't need to explain it too much because it's like, it's like sounds of impacts, right? But, but then the other instruments that I bring into the story, um, I had to research and, and create a sort of um, a dynamic that could, well, kill someone and, uh, and, and you know, really make the most. And I, I wanted everything to be very human scaled um, uh, because if you rig, if you rig uh, instruments and use their core functions, you can actually you know, I'm not saying any of this is real and please nobody tries this at home, but I'm just saying, I'm just, I tried to keep it in a sort of human scale that was really relating to the straightforward functioning mechanisms of those instruments. I didn't want them to be like jigsaw, like, you know, industrial um, uh, contraption. I wanted them to be the personal craft um, of Alexis. So, and then there's, there's a lot of, um, a lot of, um, um, a lot of uh, murders that just didn't make it because they were just too big. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually my next question. I was going to say, were there any that you know, it just wasn't in the budget that you really wanted to pin? Or did you get pushback from uh, like any your producers about doing one? Any? Um, no, I think it was mostly of a story thing. Okay. Um, and, uh, and it was just, uh, uh, it felt like, like the, 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 um, the producers were on board with whatever I, I was I was willing to to go with, um, and it was more like I had to to do something that I could that would serve the story and serve the character, and some of them I had some ideas that were very akin to to a jaw to jaw <laughs> jigsaw type um, contraption, and because um, essentially I had never thought of soul when I was making the movie. But um, but I, I after the short, some people were like, "Oh, this is like soul, but with music." And I'm like, "No, it's not at all. It's you know, it's not at all intended to be." Um, but I took that comment on board, and and therefore in the process, I wanted everything to feel a bit more per, uh, personal for that reason. Um, and and then and then uh, uh, yeah, I, the ones I'm the one who ruled out the ones that I felt were just not going to work. Um, and that's, that's where, you know, my, all the team that worked in, uh, this film with me, um, definitely had, um, a very open mind (laughs) to whatever I could come up with. That's awesome. Uh, one thing I really loved about this film is how you visually show showcased, uh, Alexis feeling towards music, uh, and violence, you know, um, that must've been something really hard to do is to actually put visually what she feels like inside and with music. So what made you come up with the idea of kind of using colors and kind of blurred vision to showcase that part of the film? So that's a conversation that we had with uh, with my producing partner, Hanu Aoki. We were, we were really um, keen to make sure that her, motiv- her motivation and her artistic high um, could somehow be felt. Um, and this is why we discussed synesthesia, the, the, the sort of condition that allows you to, to experience sound in different sensorial ways. So in, the, in this case, it's called chromesthesia, which is seeing it as colors and lights. 
and we had you know and doing more and more research we we found that like a lot of people who experience it um kind of experience it their own way it could be somebody who literally just sees straightforward colors when they hear a number for example or some people have more you know trippy experiences and and so that gave us a bit of freedom to then create something very custom to alexis and then create an environment that really immerses her into the sound rather than confronts her with the damages she's causing um and and um i think synesthesia was was not just a you know a turn of style it was really a, an idea of 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 the of the the, the manifestation of, of everything she experienced as a child and how she wants to experience that high again and um and and it's it almost gives something tangible to latch onto something that that, that we can uh with the audience going ah f this feels familiar but you know if you go back to to her origin story and then and you're like and you're and and also because frankly synesthesia is like it's such a fascinating condition I, I mean, it's it's more of an ability than a condition. I mean, for me, the idea of, a, of experiencing sound in a new way is an ability. Um, and a lot of fantastic music producers uh, are are said to have synesthesia. And it's important for to 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 see this uh, as an artist, uh, you know, uh, an extra high to your to your craft. Actually, there there are painters even who paint their synesthesia. There's one uh, called Melissa McCracken, for example, is one that we uh, we had, we saw and. Yeah, so it's just it was it was a, it was important to find something to anchor her motivation because we made the chant the choice of being with her the whole film rather than making the ooh where is she now kind of uh, dynamic. We shifted that paradigm, so we felt that we had to um, to uh, to enhance that experience uh, as far as we could. That's awesome. Uh, another great thing about this movie is the cast. Uh, all the all the parts are really cast really well, but Thank just in a film about music, and you happen to have James Jagger, uh, Jagger's son. What was that like? And to, for to work with him, and of course the rest of the cast as well, which were all brilliant. I mean, Jimmy is is he's himself. He's a cool guy. Um, frankly, we never really discussed anything else, um, and and that's not why I cast him either. I cast him because I saw him in vinyl, and I, I knew uh, I, I could see his energy, and I, I kind of, when I wrote his character, I kind of, I, I thought about vinyl, and um, and that's why I just kind of, you know, when I reached out to him, or when my our casting director did, um, there was, there was a, a relationship, and then when I got to meet him, he had exactly the attitude that I was hoping he would have in terms of, of this sort of laid back, um, very amicable guy who is kind of caught up in this situation. And so it was it was great. It was a great um, uh, moment. And of course, yeah, the fact that he's been in a band for a while and then his other music uh, relationships, of course, have been uh, do help a lot. And we wanted the, everybody to be very music relevant. And that's why as well, um, you know, Jasmine is a, 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 a you know, a singer and a songwriter and she is she has a deep connection with music um and you know amongst all the various traits that she shares with the the character i wrote um you know jasmine first of all is a force to be reckoned with and i i i i'm so lucky to have her embodying alexis because she brings it to a level that uh that uh, hopefully will resonate with uh, will, with all uh, audiences um, and her performance really kind of, um, you know, the first time I met her, um, first of all, it was our casting director, Amy Renee came up with the idea of, or suggested uh, Jasmine. And I was just like, this is Jasmine, she's great. She, I saw her in The Leftovers. And, um, and I, we met, we always joke about who was more nervous that day. I can tell you it was definitely me. Uh, and and we we started to chit chat, and she appreciated the identity of the character and the fact that I wrote it was kind of an open mind rather than any cliche, and I kept it in a way that she could then really meet me there and and embody that character and be also herself in that. But then she also pushed me immediately to make sure that I would never let that character down. And you know when you see and you meet an actor who's already. Um, caring about the character so much, it's it's fantastic. And then uh, that aside, her craft, her skills, her passion for what she does meant that the the collaboration we had was very special. And then, you know, because 
you know, English is not my first language. You know, I'm born and bred in Paris. I, uh, I, I'm also Finnish. I, you know, I moved to the, to the UK in 2001. Um, and, you know, I, I still, when I write, there, there is still that sense that the dialogue flows, but it's not, you can tell it's not my mother tongue. And it's just so, I reworked all that with, with her and, um, and we really made it so that we could, we could make sure that we keep everything on message, but there was a sort of fine tuning to make it really, and that was a testament to all the time and, cra and commitment she gave to this role. Um, similarly, Lily is an actress I've followed for a long time and I wanted to work with her and we got lucky, timing aligned and she was available and, then for, and therefore, boom. We, uh, we had uh, this amazing cast, this trio in front of us um, for, for roles and all of them with a certain passion for the script. They read it and they came back really enthused by the fact that it was so different from anything that, you know, there's always a relationship when you get, when you offer um, a horror movie, because there's a lot of horror movies out there. And, and once in a while you offer them a script and it might be a bit pedestrian or predict predictable and it might be a little bit, um, it, it's, it, it's hard to say which horror movies are going to be the one that, for example, agents and manager recommend somebody doing. But and we really had a fantastic response from um, all of them and 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 their representatives. So it just it was there was something really organic in the way we uh, we cast this and um, and it, again their commitment each to their to their role and their understanding and grasp of it and how also they brought their own personalities to each um, make them you know, more interesting. And that's why often uh, people refer to this film as a thriller because the, 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 the characters are a little bit more uh, relatable sometimes, somehow. But even though it has a strong horror. Uh, yeah, the, I, the performances in this are just fantastic. I mean, Jasmine Savoy Brown, I mean, what, what a special actress. And I, I honestly, probably my favorite performance in a horror movie I've seen this year. And thank you. I mean, I know she's going to have a great career and I, she's cast in Scream the upcoming yeah. screen movie that's going to be coming out. So I know we'll be seeing a lot more. Uh, yeah, I mean, she's done that. She's done that. She has a TV show. Now she's shooting a, a TV show for Showtime called yellow jacket. She's, she mm -hmm. was in the Spider-Man video game, uh, miles Morales. She's, mm -hmm. I mean, I can tell you if I tried to get her today, I probably wouldn't <laughs> be able to. Um, so I got very lucky and, 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 um, you know, it was her first lead role, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it was coming anyway, I, got, I, I suppose. But I'm very lucky to, 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 to you know, to have this, to, 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 to have this, as I said, forced to be reckoned with mm -hmm. uh, as our lead. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess that's a, probably a good place to end off, uh, Alex. Uh, before we let you go, is there anything uh, upcoming that uh, you can tease us or anything like that? I mean, I, 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 I'm... I, Speaking for myself, and I'm sure Steve too, because we both really enjoyed the movie. I I think you have a great career ahead of you for sure. So we're very excited to see what what you have coming up. Thank you very much. Um, nothing that I can announce yet. Um, okay. I'm working on a on a horror movie that is uh, really tapping into my Nordic uh, origins. So that I'm really excited to to uh, get into uh, development soon. And I've been as well now approached for a couple of. Uh, of a more supernatural actually story which is interesting because a supernatural was not necessarily my my uh my strength but uh but uh the story i'm writing and the stories i've been i'm in talks uh, about are supernatural but then i also have a a tv show that i'm that i've been working on for a couple of years that now i'm I, I might get more into gear um to produce uh which is is very much in the same kind of vein uh, as conductor and then um, and then sound of violence, but uh, but a very 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 different premise. But something that if we can get it off the ground could get uh, um, a few people uh, <laughs> excited. Hopefully, awesome. All right, well, Alex, we're, we're very excited um, to have you uh, on today. Thank you so much. Thanks and, for having me. Yeah, totally.
I'll see you in hell. Tell him Freddy sent you. <laughs> <laughs> 